wonderful people this is the very first time that we are actually bringing out our master classes and giving public access to people i really hope that you will be able to learn a lot with all of us and wishing you all a very happy new year if in case you would want access to more such sessions then make sure that you pick up the tall elephant journal and i will see you live in a master class soon Hello, hi, good evening. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Good evening. Very, very happy to see you all here. Good evening. Hi. <laughs> Can you hear me? Am I audible? I'm audible. Okay, perfect. Great. All right. So as always, I always wait for two minutes for the participants to trickle in and I will start the session in two minutes. I'm super duper happy to have you all here. I know there are many of you who are, uh, you know, the veterans of the tall elephant community and there are many, many of you who are new here. I hope you will get accustomed to the community. I hope you'll be able to learn a lot with all of us. And I have some exciting stuff to share with all of you today. So it's going to be a jam-packed session. We'll make sure that all the questions that you have, everything that you must be thinking, or maybe it just came up as a thought and you just wanted to know what's the purpose, why is it there, how to take care of it. I hope you find answers for all of them today, tomorrow, and day after. Okay? All right. So what we'll do is before we start the session, how about you people tell me saying, is this your first time with Tall Elephant, second time, or the third time with Tall Elephant? Can you put that in the chat for me, please? Oh, wow. A lot of veterans here. Third time, second time, first time. Okay. Third time. That's nice to know. Wow. Good. We have a lot of first timers, people who are also here for the second consecutive year. Third time. Okay. Perfect. All right. Welcome on board. I'm very happy to have you all here. So are we good to start? Can we start off with the session? All right. Okay. So first things first, I'll tell you how does this work. So uh, when we do the master classes, in the interest of everyone who's joined it the first time, uh, usually, uh, if at all, it is to do with the journal setup or anything of that kind, there will be two screens that we will be using. One where I will be training you the way that you see me on screen. And the second one will be another studio setup where you will be able to see me do the writing and the drawing and you know talk to you about various different spreads. For the session, ideally, what's good to have with you is all of you from RISE. Please keep your checklist and the toolkit along with you because you will be able to pull up things from there to accommodate into your uh, planning practice. So keep your checklist and uh, toolkit. The rest of you who are not from RISE, uh, just get your little black box. Whatever are your confidence, get that, get your fancy pens to have along with you. And also, please make sure you have a notebook in which you would want to probably make notes because for few of us, our journals are supposed to be looking extremely beautiful. So maybe you can then make notes in your rough notebook or your normal notebook and then go back and use it later. Now, questions that was there, I saw one particular question. How long is the session? Ideally, the session is up to 8.30. But if there are questions that's still going on, I might push it up to 8.45 today. Okay, but 8.45 is a hard stop because I also have to step out today. All right, perfect. So on that note, we're going to start off. So um, let's start with a few things directly from here. Okay, I don't know if you people can see the secondary screen. I'm going to ask them to spotlight it for you. There, you should be able to see both the screens. So for many, many of you, you must have received the box where your name is nice, shiny, and it's looking very pretty, pretty. For few of you, it might be like, okay, why is my name not shining at all? So the initial set of boxes that we sent out, we did not remove the film on top of it. And for the few of them, we have removed the film. The reason there's a film on top of it is to make sure that it is scratch proof, okay? So how do you take care of it is basically, I'll just show you quickly. There is a film on top of it. So if you just kind of, you know, pull it out, there is a film which kind of nicely comes out. So for those of you who have this box, and if you think that there was a film, just make sure that you remove the film and then you'll see it all shiny, shiny and nice. Okay. So this is one thing that you have to keep in mind. During the masterclass, I will be talking to you a lot about the usability of various different components. I will talk to you about why is it there? What's the purpose of it? What's the psychology behind it? Why did we do what we did? Okay. Uh, 
so yeah why why the name obviously it has to be you front and center that's why we did what we did so when you uh, when you get access to your bo uh, box few things to keep in mind is this is a wooden box okay while we say it's a wooden box with climate and temperature the box might vary and change like you know how latches change with climate uh, you know that the doors might get stuck at times so all that you need to do is if you take look at take a look at the latch maybe at times what happens is it might have a millimeter of a difference because it's not getting closed so all that you need to do is make sure that you kind of take care of it by pushing it a little uh, to the left or to the right and you can remove using a screwdriver and push it back like how you take care of any hinges at uh, at your home just take care of it in that way okay all right so when you open the black box today i think what i want to kind of work on is spend a lot of time with you people on two components, um, which is the first one is to do with your little tray that we put in together. And the second one is your journal. So we will do both of it together today, okay? So I want you to understand the purpose. I want you to understand how to use it, when to use it, and how to go about with it. So here you go. So this is how you must have received this small little tiny tray that we put together and we sent you. Now, a uh, few things to keep in mind. What came out of this is a normal tote bag. Why did we give you this tote bag? How much weight can this tote bag hold? Everything inside the box can go into this. It'll hold that weight. Will it hold the entire box inside? It might not hold the entire box inside. It'll hold, because I'm assuming you're not going to carry your box all the way around. You want to carry your planner or your journal or other things inside. So you can definitely put it inside uh, your uh, bag that's there. And also feel free to put the bag into the washing machine if you're washing it because it's not about one time use it's about usability you can definitely put it into the washing machine ideally like how you take care of your cottons uh first time salt water if you can dip it in it and then probably put it into the washing machine the color will stay for a longer duration of time do not bother about thinking will it fade will it change nothing will happen it's very very good quality that we've given you Make sure that you remove the pom poms because poms were pom poms in the washing machine. I may, oh my God, I can't even think about it. Please don't put the pom poms into the washing machine. Okay. So, this is one to take care of. So, I'm not going to open the bag and show you the rest of the things. I'm sure you know about the bag and the usage, right? So, we'll not spend time on that. Um, okay. Things about the usability related to your um, two other things that we gave you which is your elastic pen pouches that we've given you. Ideally, because it's, okay, this is man-made and machine-made, okay? So there might be a little, uh, a, a few times where the corners might just get cut because you've, you've been carrying it and something sharp might cut it off. All that you need to do is take a scissor and remove it. If you do not take a scissor and remove it, it might start opening up a little more. What we've tried to do is to give you a lot more knots in between, so you will not have a possibility of it opening it off completely. We've tried to do our best to make sure that you can hold it for a long time. And also, inside this, it's basically stitched in between. The reason I've got it stitched is I'm assuming you're only going to be carrying pens inside this. If we hadn't stitched it, things would have fallen out. Okay, so uh, you need to make sure that you use it for the purpose that it's made. Do not try pushing, you know, sharper objects and you know you'll damage it. And yeah, the elastic is super duper tight. It is meant to be tight. I've purposefully made it tight because if you are somebody who will be using the elastic with the journal, when I open the journal, I'll talk to you about it. If you're going to be using the journal with the elastic, it needs to be tight at the beginning and then expand slowly with the weight that you'll be adding to it. Okay. That's why it's given the way it's given. And this too can be washed comfortably. The colors will not fade from one to the other. Now, yeah, my most, most important <laughs> things that I want to definitely talk to you about is this one, which is the candles that we've given you. There are two separate candles that I've put up here. Okay, those who can't see the secondary screen, please swipe to the next. Okay, those of you who are saying you can't see, please swipe to the next. Okay, 
All right, so uh, let's talk a little more about the candles. Am I happy I gave you people candles? I am. Am I disappointed that I gave you candles? I am. I'll tell you why. Because uh, I think in shipment, because it was glass, it kind of broke many, many times. And oh, I think it was it was a Herculean task for my team to, to come back and to take care of things by themselves. Poor things. I think they're trying to do their best. Okay. However, there are two two different uh, candles that we've given you. The reason I made it glass jars is because you want to use it for a longer duration of time. What do I mean by it is these are fragrant candles and these are soy based candles. Okay, because these are fragrant candles, if you do not keep them closed, many a times you might lose the smell of it. It does not happen immediately, but over a period of time, because I'm assuming that you're going to use this for six months to a year, the smell of it will kind of come down. That's why when you keep it closed, it stays intact. So after you've finished using it, make sure that you close your candles and keep. Okay, good. Now, um, I don't know if you people know about the hot throw and the cold throw of a candle. So I'm going to be spending some time to talk to you about that, about what the hot throw is, what a cold throw is. When you take your candle and you smell it, like you take the candle, you just smell it. I'm sure you can smell and you can feel a fragrance. Have you tried doing that with your candles? Yeah, so you feel like, oh my God, I love this candle. Like suddenly when we just smell a candle, when we go to the shops, we're like, oh my God, this feels nice. That feels nice. We kind of smell it and we feel like, oh, this feels good. That feels good. That's just the cold throw. Okay, cold throw of a candle will be very different from the hot throw. What do I mean by the hot throw of a candle? Hot throw is to do with when the candle is lit. How does the smell feel like? How much do you feel the fragrance of it inside your room? All of that definitely matters. Okay, so uh, what we've tried to do is to give you very good hot throws. Now, there are two flavors that I've given you. One is your uh, elixir that you've given, the elixir of earth. This one is your blooms of joy. Now, for all of you to understand why is it given the way it's given, understand this clearly. The elixir of earth is basically a composition which is done to help you people when you're hyper aroused. For those of you who have done the ABC session with me or the RICE session with me, you know that a human being usually is in one of the three zones. You might be in your hyper zone, hypo zone, or a resilient zone. Days that you feel like you're panicking, there's a lot of anxiousness around. You don't like the way that you're feeling. You're too edgy. Please use the elixir of earth. It definitely helps you to ground yourself. Are you with me? Did you understand what I said? And how do you use a candle? Is you always use a candle where the moment you light it, it does not start giving you the fragrance. It takes some time for the fragrance to come in. And usually the first 30 minutes of a, of a candle, like a brand new candle like this, the first 30 minutes, you might not even feel the smell because they are made out of soya. If it is made out of a petroleum one, then it kind of starts off immediately. But because these are soy based and we know that there are a lot of pregnant women who pick up our journals and all of that, we want you to feel safe. So it takes 30 minutes. And usually what you could do is light it for 30 minutes to 45 minutes and then turn it off. The smell will linger around in your room for the entire day or at least for three to four hours, depending on the weather condition in your city where you are residing in and also depending on how big your room is. Are you with me? Did you understand what I said? So there is something called the hot throw. There is something called the th cold throw. Depending on uh, which one you're using, many a times the hot throw of both of this is extremely good. But let's say you're from Kerala or a very highly moisture based place. In that case, you will not even feel the smell. You're like, okay, why is it that I'm not able to pick up the smell? Mumbai, why am I not able to pick up the smell? Because there's a lot of moisture in your air. When there's a lot of moisture in your air, like a dry place like Bangalore, the moment you light it, you'll know, eh, there's a fragrance candle here. But if you are from Kerala or from, uh, you know, moisture-based place, you know the locations, any of those, you have to stay closer to the candle. Clear? Did you understand? Use the elixir of joy, the times that you feel hyper aroused. Those times that you're going through sad moments, you're feeling a little depressed or you're feeling a little lonely, like you came back home and you're feeling extremely tired or you feel like you've been procrastinating quite a lot. Those are all symptoms of hypoarousal. 
for hypo arousal please use the blooms of joy you will definitely feel like a bloom you will feel like ah oh, okay i am in a garden and it feels nice so use the blooms of joy for that okay the compositions of the aroma is done in a way that it helps you in both of those cases are you with me did you get what i spoke about now few other things to talk about okay i'm going to bring my candle closer to the camera i don't know if it will catch it because i've tried to light it when you light a candle okay i don't think you can see i'll show it to you from here only when you light a candle there are multiple things which can go right which can go wrong i think we all have this fancy habit of picking up candles from everywhere we're like okay it just smells nice we're going to pick it up we're going to keep it at home and use it but to use candles too there are multiple things to keep in mind so that you can use them for a longer duration of time would you want to learn more about that so i can talk to you a little bit about that and you know how to use it yes no not your head say yes or no okay great perfect so first and foremost is when you light a candle right the way that we have given you the wick inside is it's almost a little above a quarter inch whenever you're lighting the candle like you're doing it multiple times not the first time first time you'll be perfectly fine but let's say you're going to be using it multiple times make sure that the wick is quarter inch itself like a lot of times the wick might be a little longer so cut it off so that it burns properly now another important thing is when you see on the wick at times there will be a black mold which will form like you'll see like on topi like somebody is wearing a black cap it kind of looks like that if you see a black cap you need to remove that too it's like similar to your dia whatever that you're using at home you see that black suit on a cotton thing the way you remove it off remove that and continue to burn okay if you do not remove it what will happen is once you start burning the candle it will form a circle right in the center and thereafter it will not pick up the corners if it does not pick up the corners if you continue to burn you turn it off and you start again it will only go deeper in the same way did you get that many a times you must have done this with your own candles or you might it might happen with your new candles that you've got from the tall elephant too in in situations like that what you could do is okay i don't have access to it get a aluminum foil wrap the aluminum foil around your candle and continue to burn when you do that what happens is when it starts melting i don't know if you know how candles melt when it starts melting it only melts around and if the edges are still solid it makes sure that evenly it's going to melt and that even melting is important so that the soot does not form on your candle or many a times you might have turned on the fan and you would not know so what happens is the candle's wick starts moving to the corner once it starts coming towards the corner then you'll see oh the glass broke or probably it's only happening in the corners here and it's not able to sustain the other part of it is not burning at all it just shows how the room composition is if you feel your candle is going into that state take your aluminum foil or something and just wrap it and allow it to burn so that it comes back to the same shape that you see when you start off clear all of you got all of this okay so this is the only thing to keep in mind and yeah not just for our candles any candle just make sure that you use them well so they look beautiful not just the first time but they continue looking beautiful for a very very long time clear so use your blooms of joy use uh, elixir of earth how you need it ideally these should come for at least 5 to 6 hours we definitely want to make it in batches and produce more but we wanted to see what the customers have to say we're going to wait, wait watch out to see what is it that you people like are you people enjoying it not enjoying it depending on how it's been used we will definitely take your feedback and then probably produce more clear did you all of you got this right okay perfect uh what was the next thing okay this is another thing that we always do we love to do we did it in the first edition we have done this in the third edition as well these are called universe speaks to you cards why did we put universe speaks to you cards in your uh, in your little black box is as much as you, you you will definitely hear me talk a lot of science you will definitely hear me talk a lot of things related to psychology as much as it looks like emotions is to do with science and psychology there are many many things that we still look for in terms of hope and hope is one emotion that can be built very strongly when you're grounded in your spirituality as much as you know today for us spirituality looks like it's only religion for few of us for few of us spirituality means wearing fancy clothes on the day that there is a festival and just eating the festive food i think spirituality goes beyond that 
making sure that you have your own spiritual practices, whatever it means to you. It could be doing your meditation, it could be doing your puja, it could be reading the Bible, it could be your namaz, whatever makes sense to you, build that as a habit consistently so you know you can go back to a place where your fear kind of mellows down, but your hope is still holding its flame and it can stand tall and straight against the fear that you have. And one hope of that is your universe speaks to you cards. Universe speaks to you cards are built on cosmic spirituality. And we did this the first year by my, by within my team and things that I'd learned. And this year, in fact, okay, the beta testing team, I'm, my deepest apologies. I had to come back and tell you whose card was what. I'll come back and tell you that. I know that I've given you uh, a promise that I'll tell you. So I'll come back to you on that. Every card in this is made by co-humans from your beta testing team and my team put together where lessons that we have learned in life, we've tried to put it together in the easiest way that all of us can learn and understand. I'll tell you how I use it. Why do I use it? And what's the purpose of it? You can choose to play around, do however, whatever makes sense to you. You. This is what I leave on my tipoy or in my living room. This set of cards, this deck stays there. How do I use it? Is days that I feel low, I feel like I need a message from the universe. I just go pull out a card for myself. The days that I'm having a small little gathering at home, we have a party at home, people tend to kind of get attracted towards this they pull out a card for themselves because it's lying there in the centerpiece of the home and then they pull out and that becomes a conversation starter saying hey you'll see people having a smile on their faces you'll see people want to know saying oh okay what was this what what was that message i think they definitely help as conversation starters we use them as conversation starters at home we also use this uh, on days for by both arun and myself we just feel like we want to know what the universe has to say we just pull out a card from here okay so let's do this because there are so many of you here let's kind of you know pull out cards for each one of you always how i do it is i ask you people to pick up a flower but today i'm going to ask you to pick up a color so i want your people to choose one color in the um, in the colors that i'm going to tell you now and i am going to pull out a message for you from the universe okay so here's how we're going to go ahead here are your options you can pick up either a yellow you can pick up a green a teal a blue or you can pick up a white pick up your color and put it in the chat i'm gonna wait for all of you to put it up go 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 i see only 97 okay 99 go okay 130 go the rest of you pick 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 quickly good all right so here are your messages from the universe for you people that I would pull out for you guys as a message for 2024. And this is what it has to tell you. For all of you who picked up teal, here's your message. It says, shift your perspective to find the answers that you're seeking. So maybe all that you need to look for is change your perspective. Maybe you're just thinking in one direction. Try to change your direction. Try to change the a viewpoint and maybe you'll find your answers okay this is for everybody who said teal right this is for everyone who said teal now for all of you who said yellow so all the yellow yellow dirty fellows this is for you okay. so it says step into your reality it's no longer a dream so if you were thinking that it's just a dream i think 2024 is the year where it's going to become real for you and for all of you who said white, here's your message. Grant yourself the power to say no. You have to do that kindly, okay? Grant yourself the power to say no kindly towards yourself too. If maybe you are one of those people who does not say no enough, so it's for you. All those of you who said green, here's your message. Remember, you lose by giving up and not by failing. Remember, you lose when you give up, not when you fail. This is for all the greens. And for all of you who, uh, who said a blue, this is for you. <laughs> Check not if you fell, but if you rose again. Don't think about saying that you just fell down. What's important is to check if you actually rose back again.
So this is your message for all of you who said blue. So if you look at all the artwork, it's all done differently for each of the cards. And like how we just kind of broke the ice, now pulling out a message, you can do that for yourself too. Uh, Any time that you feel like I just want to know what's happening, you just want to know if the universe had a voice, what would it say? You can pull out a card from here and it'll probably give you the message that you're looking for. Now, yeah, uh, because these are... These are human cut. These are cut in hand because we wanted to make sure that you have that not a edge which is straight, but this is spiral. A lot of times you might find little blobs in the corner. This is just the human cut. So imperfections are good. Okay. So don't feel like, oh my God, mine is so imperfect. Why does it look like this? Come on. All of us are imperfectly perfect and it's totally fine for it to be that way. It was a trade-off for us to say, saying, do we want sharper edges or do we want round edges? We definitely wanted it to be round edges. Therefore, this choice had to be made. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I think I kind of covered everything that was there in the box. Oh yeah, I saw somebody making a video. Okay. In the video, they were like, they should have kept something under this box. The universe speaks to you cards had to go under. I chose to keep it over because what's the point showing you an empty thing which looks like this? So yeah. <laughs> so those were the things which were in the tray. And we will start off with our masterpiece of uh, the journal right now. Okay. Just give me a moment. Let me pull out the journal. So whenever I'm going to be journaling, few things to keep around you is keep the journal, keep your pens accessible towards yourself. And I'm hoping, I'm definitely, definitely hoping that you're also going to be keeping your sticker book that you will probably need later. Okay, I'm moving things too much around here. Perfect. Okay, so... Now, a few things to again keep in mind in terms of usability before we go into the journal. Um, first and foremost, we've done our best to make sure that this is scratch resistant. So while I say it's scratch resistant, will it catch dirt? It will definitely catch dirt. Or even if you look at the black wrapping paper that we've given you, maybe at times the black wrapping itself would have rubbed over it and it feels like, oh my God, my journal got dirty. All that you need to do is wet your uh, a small cloth, of, uh, a small cloth or including your, what are those called? That microfiber cloths, if you have, just use the microfiber cloth, just wet it a little bit and wipe it, it'll totally be fine. You have no idea how much I use my journal. So I've tried my best this year that whatever it is, it actually feels good in each one of your hands. And the beauty of it continues to stay till the last day of 2024, okay? So you will see that there is a good finish on the journal on the top. And as you open it, yeah, you can also use a sanitizer. Correct, Prachi. Yeah, you can use a sanitizer as well. And few things to keep in mind is because this year's journal is bulky, you can try and do this depending on how good a user you are. Okay, so you can try to do multiple things. I've seen people thinking, oh my God, this will come off. The spine will come off. The spine does not come off. And if you have that fear, how do you take care of it? Is you see the sheet, the sheet that we have put here, the entire weight of your journal actually sits on the sheet. This is the one which holds the sheet and the last sheet. These two are the ones which holds the weight. If you feel like, Are, I think my journal with usability, I'm seeing because I'm opening it so many times or I'm using it so many times, the edges here, like in the sheet, in the sheet, you feel like, oh, I think it's just detaching. All that you need to do is, if you feel you are going to be using it for a long time, glue the sheet to the sheet. You're adding more strength. What people tend to do is the moment they get scared, they'll start adding glue here. Do not add glue here. There's no point. You don't need glue here at all. There is a small little uh, netted cloth which is being used here to hold the weight. Don't worry about that. Okay. You're going to make sure that you kind of glue this sheet the journal sheet to this one. So your letter to myself is stuck to the main sheet. Did you get that? Do the same thing in the last sheet. Too. In this sheet too, you can probably add both of this together. At the year end is when you want to cut it open. No, that time you can cut it open if you want to do it. If you feel like I have that fear, this time's journal looks bulky. I might not be able to hold it together. Just glue it together so it will make you feel comfortable. Clear? 
Okay. And yeah, so the stick, uh, the stickers are also tucked in here in case you want to pull out your stickers. There are a lot of sticker sheets inside your journal. You can pull it out from there. I've tried to give you a flap here in case it's not just the sticker sheets. You want to carry something like a lot of times tickets or things like, like your bills that you might want to keep it together. I've seen for myself when I put it into a pocket like this, I kind of get scared thinking, what if it falls off? That's why there is a flap. So put it under the flap. It will hold it together. Like, you know how your journals came to you, right? None of you even knew that there is a sticker sheet there. And you're like, where is my sticker sheet? Where is my sticker sheet? The flaps will actually hold it well. Clear? Are you with me till here? Okay. So that's all in terms of, you know, usability and stuff like that. How to take care of it. Now let's get into the real job of, you know, doing setting up our journal. Now, why do you have all of this? What's the purpose of it? And how do we go about with journaling? Like, you know. Journal is one of those uh, habits. Journaling is definitely one of those habits which will help you to figure out yourself in multiple ways. Because usually what happens is we have our own story that we're playing in our heads and we tend to not even know saying, okay, what's happening in life? What am I even going through? So how do you learn to befriend yourself? How do you learn to coach yourself? How do you learn to talk to yourself? All of that lies in your journal. And for those of you who have already had the 2022 journal or the 2023 journal, I, before I start off with the 2024 one, I'm pretty sure, tell me if I'm right or wrong, the, the, those of you who kind of have been using it consistently, it becomes very difficult for us to even let it go. Saying, oh my God, my journal, I will not be able to use it. As much as the new journals look nice, we wouldn't be ready to let it go because that's how friendly we become with our journals. How many of you here feel that way? Can you put your experience of 2022 and 2023 here in the chat? I really want to know how many of you have been using it for a long time and how do you feel to let it go? Yeah, so those of you who are saying, yeah, it, it is like that for me. Uh, so yeah, it, it is a very difficult process, okay? So uh, you need to embrace the process because that's how friendly you become with your journal. Uh, ideally, I always suggest look at your journal like as if you were talking to your bestest friend in your life. Don't look at it thinking it's an accountability partner alone. Look at it saying, how will I talk to my bestest friend? Being 100% honest, what are those conversations that I'll have with myself is what you kind of put into this journal, okay? Now, uh, each one of these have been put for a reason and I'll tell you how to use it too because there are many, many of them who think it's made in the same purpose and there's too much generic uh, conversation which happens around it. But psychologically, I'll tell you why do you have to do what you have to do. The first one that we start with is a letter to myself this particular letter that I've given you space for, you can use it in multiple uh, ways, but I'll tell you why is it being put here and what's the conversation that I want you to have. If you were to write a love letter to a person that you really love a lot, okay, somebody that you fell in love with, imagine those days that you had a crush on somebody and you're like, okay, I want to convey my love to this human being. However, that you kind of would have spoken to that person, I want you to use that same lingo towards yourself. Because many a times when you start talking to yourself, and especially at the beginning of the year, you start telling, okay, I want you to achieve this next year. I think we will do this next year. I think we will do that next year. Those are goals. That is not how you learn to have a good self-talk. If you are someone who wants to really know how to talk to yourself and you want to build that self-love as a capacity within yourself, start from here. Imagine you are writing a love letter to yourself for all that this person has been doing and this person has been bearing in terms of, uh, you know, executing for you, for your dreams. Whatever you would want to tell for yourself at this point of time, that's the letter that you'll write for yourself. This has nothing to do with your dreams. This has nothing to do with your vision. This is a honest love letter. Now, now imagine I pulled out all of that. I said, you can't talk your dreams. You can't talk about things which, are, uh, which, which has to do with your vision. What would you really talk to yourself? That is what I want you to build here. How does this help is it creates a newer neurosynapsis in your mind. 
it helps you to look at yourself from a different perspective that you haven't been seeing in yourself. It kind of connects you back to your inner child in a happier way. Like how you would have that joy of being a kid. This letter, if you do it right, you will feel the same joy of being a kid in this adult body. Are you with me? Did you understand why this is here? So yeah, go ahead. Uh, what was that word you used? Neuro what? Prani, I said neurosynapsis. So neurosynapsis, you can definitely go do a little bit of research to understand. Neurosynapsis is basically how your brain talks in your head and how does the conversations happen between the neurons. That's what is called the neurosynapsis. Okay, so take time to write a letter for yourself. Take time to sit with yourself and ask yourself, uh, how have you been doing? Things that you would write in a love letter. As, as simple as that. Write that letter to yourself. Are you with me? Did you understand this? Okay, good. Uh, this one I kind of always give because I don't know how many of us have this habit of misplacing things, but you will never be misplacing your journal, I know. But if you feel like that you might, if you want to put down details, you can definitely go put down your normal details here. I'm not going to tell you more about it. Uh, but yeah, why, why this illustration, you know, we are called the tall elephant. And last year we had everything to do with butterflies. So we wanted to make sure those of you who've been consistently using our journal don't feel left out saying, okay, this is all brand new. This is your, this is an ode to the 2023 uh, journal and for your practice, for you to know saying it's just a continuation of 2023 into 2024. Okay. All right. I always pen a letter for you from the universe thinking what is it that people might be thinking currently and with all the things that I've understood this year, I think we are all chasing numbers very, very badly. We behave like a maniac when numbers go haywire. It could be the simplest of numbers in terms of our followers or simplest of things in terms of our body weight, or it could be as complex as how much are we earning. We think our value is built on these numbers and I hope when you read this letter, you kind of also go back to figure out saying a human being is more than a number. Numbers are just one part of who we are as human beings. There's a lot more that we do, which is to do with our value system. So that's the message that I wanted to leave back for you. So I hope you will be able to take some time, some time and read this letter. Okay. Now, um, this one is to do with your I am letter. Okay. Now, why do I give this as a sheet, as a spread every single time is I remember when I used to go for yoga earlier, right? In 2020, 2012, 2013, when I started doing yoga, uh, one of the things that I remember my yoga trainer also telling me is how do you identify yourself as? I think that was one question that she kind of used to ask every single day saying, how do you identify yourself as? I think every day my answers used to kind of change. I wanted to give you people the same opportunity to go back to yourself and ask yourself, if you did not have a name, how do you think you would identify yourself as? Who are you? Imagine you're stripped away from your name and now you have to introduce yourself to people. Or do you, or you forget people. I think with people, you're very smart to tell all the professional stuff that you do. Imagine you had to reintroduce yourself to yourself. How would you introduce yourself as? Who are you as a person? I am. What? Who are you? Are you kind? Are you a nice human being? Are you a person who is work in progress? Are you a person that you see that you're still getting better at things? Are you a person that you see you are uh, the daughter of the universe, the son of the universe? Are you a person who feels that you're an overthinker? Whoever that you think you are, this is what you start with. Are you with me? All of you, because you have your journal. Maybe I would have definitely told you saying, you know, write your name in the journal, but don't write your name. What's that first thing that comes to your mind when you think about yourself? Right now, take a pen and pen it out. What's that first word that you think defines you the best today in 2023? Yeah, so take time, fill this up whenever that you feel comfortable, sit down and complete it. Uh, last time I kind of put a picture in between this, but again, this year we were thinking, okay, is this, what's the form? Because we have good amount of men and women who are a part of the community. So I said, you know what, let's not put a form at all. Put your picture. 
I think today we all have access to good printers around. Just take a good amount of pictures that you can probably get access to of yourself, put your picture in this and then define yourself. And trust me, when you finish the year and come back to the sheet, now you'll be like, oh my God, is this what I thought about myself? Is this how I used to think that I am? And it's a magical process to definitely go back into. Clear? You got this? Did you understand this? All of you are with me? Okay. So basically, it's still a self-reflection page, but from a newer perspective, I've kind of given you a prompt and I want you to reflect on yourself a little more deeply before you start setting your goals. That's why I put this here. Okay. This one being my most favorite and things that people say saying, oh my God, your journal is so overwhelming. Hello. It's not overwhelming. They say a human being has a lot of features. Can you really identify all the good things that exist inside of you? You might be thinking someone else is your crit worst critic. No, you are your worst critic. You think that you are bad at many, 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 many things. But leaving those, can you see that you're also good at many, 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 many things? So sit down with yourself, ask yourself, what are you good at? What do you really love about yourself? It might be difficult for few of us to start with one or two, but if you push yourself, you will definitely be able to complete it. How can you complete it? Um, you can sit down and do this. Uh, how I do it, I'll tell you that. I finished this at the beginning of the year. This is my yearly reset. I sit with myself. I ask myself, what have I become? I reconsider my previous year's sheet, the spread that I'd done. I'll see if I've grown beyond that or have I still been there in that same place. So it really depends on how do you want to do it. You can do it at one go or you can do it saying every month beginning, I'm going to come and write five things. I'm going to do six things every month. I'm going to identify five new things that I love about myself and I'll come back and fill it. But don't do it because you want to escape the rush in the beginning of the year of saying, I don't think I can think about myself for more than five. That's that's not OK. OK, if you feel that way, push yourself to make it seven, push yourself to make it eight, push yourself to make it ten. The moment you feel like I think I'm done, push yourself to think two more. That's when you know your you're capable of many, many things. You're trying to rethink and see yourself for the person that you are. Building self-compassion is about two things. One, identifying the flaws in you, but also identifying the good things in you. We think, oh, people are very selfish when they think about the good things in them. No, today I think all of us suffer where we don't even understand how good we are. That's where the suffering really starts with. So you're going to sit down and spend time and finish it. Everybody from the rice community, you're going to do it like my way. You're going to sit down, finish your 51, take a picture of it and send it to me on the community. I want to know if you finished it or you did not finish it. I don't want to know what you wrote because it's on the community. You can make sure that it is blurred. But all of you from the rice community, you're going to finish it at one go. It's going to take time. It definitely took me 45 minutes to sit on this one thing. But you're going to sit down and you're going to finish it because you deserve to take that time. Okay. Can I go ahead? Did, okay. What are those examples? All adjectives that define a human being are all examples of it. Okay. So there. Um, this one is for you to relook at 2023. Again, a bunch of questions to reflect on the year from the perspective that we need to look at it in. If you look at usually when we go back and think about years, no, like let's say I asked you, say, can you think about 2018 and tell me how was your year? Think about it. Do you know how your 2018 was? How many of you know how your 2018 was? And many a times, no, it will only be one strong event, which would have hit you like a thunderbolt. If it has hit you, you will know saying this is what happened this year. And I know how bad that year was. Or probably it's a very strong positive event that happened. And you're like, oh, I think I know what it is. But that particular year that we're going through, there's so much that we're learning. There's so much that's happening throughout the year. And we tend to kind of forget about it. This is your opportunity to wrap 2023 with all your learnings and to understand who you are and what are you becoming. Clear? Take a moment to read these questions before I go to the next spread. And if you have a question, please feel free to put it in the chat. I'll definitely kind of jump in and talk to you about it. But take a moment and think about it. Yeah. Okay, good.
okay what is how is i am different from what i love about me um if you look at the i am spread this is your definition of who you are many a times we don't we don't say i love about all of these things and my i am in the same line like for example um uh, I'm the daughter of the universe. I identify, I actually identify myself like that in all honesty. I feel like I am one. I feel like that, you know, yes, my mom, dad are my parents, but also the universe is a part of it, of my upbringing. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been the person that I am today. I acknowledge the universe very strongly. Do I see what 51 things I love about me? Will I write it as I am the daughter of universe? Maybe. But I will also say that I surrender to the universe highly. That's what I love about me. That, you know, be it good, be it bad, I don't take it to myself. I only take it in a perspective of saying this belongs to me, but also belongs to the universe. So when bad things happen, I give it back also. When good things happen, I give it back also. So that's the way that I surrender. So I like the way that I surrender. I built it as a habit consistently, but I think I'm happy where I am today. You understood, no? You got the difference, right? Um, okay. We should, and about me. Okay, I'm going to come back to your questions in some time, okay? Let me finish all of this. I'll definitely respond to all of your questions at the end of the session because I know that there's a lot which is happening in the chat. We'll come back and talk. Okay. Uh, yeah, there was something about fifth question. Yeah, reflect on lessons learned about self-care and well-being. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Does it look complicated? <laughs> I'm assuming it's not. I want you to go back and look at it. Each one of these questions, no? It's basically for you to introspect a lot and say, did you even spend time? Like the specific question. Did you even spend time on your self-care this year? Did you even spend time on your well-being? We usually think that person is messing up my life. This person's messing up my life. My job is messing up my life. Somebody else is messing up my life. Hello, what did you do to take care of yourself? Through this mess, what have you done to take care of yourself other than just complaining? Did you do things which makes you feel good? And when you did it, did you feel good about it? Or you did not do it? Then what's the lesson that you've learned? Is, it, is your happiness only dependent on the other person making things right for you? Or is it also dependent on you doing things right for you? I just pulled out an example and I'm speaking randomly, okay? So, make sense? Did you understand? That's why I've given you all these five questions. Did you like it? Show me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, the, this sheet. Yeah, yes, no, sure. I don't know if your people liked it. Okay, great, all right. <laughs> Okay, this one is for you to track everything in terms of, this is your normal calendar, okay? Um, important dates that you want to remember. Now, how do I use my journal and my planner and my calendar separately? I'll talk to you about it. I'll also give you instructions depending on what you've bought. If you bought the little black box, do it the way that I tell you. If you bought just the uh, journal, then do it. I'll also tell you how to use it. Now, how I use my journal is my journal is me front and center. I don't even write one chore or one thing which has to do with my professional life or my people around me, including my loved ones to not go into this. This is me and my journey and my becoming journey alone. So dates which are important to me, I kind of mark them here. I don't even write a uh, birthdays here. I don't even write anniversaries here. I only write in this spread. In my case, I only put my self-care days. Days to do with my spa, my massages, or it could be to do with, uh, you know, things that I'm doing to take care of myself, my self-compassion activities that I would have picked up. It could be the bubble baths. It could be things that I feel like I have to schedule it and I have to take care of myself. That's what goes into this. My uh, anniversaries and birthdays and important professional events, all of that goes onto my calendar. On the calendar, the back part of the calendar, like, you know, okay, wait, I'll show it to you. So, you know. There. So in the calendar, in the back part is where I write all these important things, because this I want to visually be able to see. And I don't like keeping anniversaries in one place, office related stuff in a different place and behaving like a maniac thinking, okay, which book, where, what, did I, what have I written? All dates for me are on this. That's why I kind of leave it here. And all the rest of it, I leave it here in terms of my personal stuff that I like to track is what I kind of keep it here. 
everybody from the rice community again now those of you who are asking about rice i'll talk to you about it later but those of you who are from the rice community your checklist when you look at it things that you kind of feel like you want to go back and keep practicing mark those as dates those are your self dates saying on this date i'm going to be doing this on this date i'm going to be doing this this is an extension of saying okay this is how i'm going to be taking care of myself and nurturing myself okay so all of you who want to kind of take care of it you can go ahead and write it here um now yeah why did i give you dotted line i would have given you a line because many of us don't know how to write straight you will write teda and then you'll be like okay i don't know how many to write so just to give you a format i've given you a dotted grid okay yeah you can mark your aham practice days too yeah the days that you practice basically everything to do with uh, your self journey i really hope you'll use this for that but let's say uh, you are somebody who feels like no i'm going to use it for any other purpose you know how a calendar can be used you can use it for all of that purposes clear can i go ahead are you feeling tired can i go ahead because none of you seem to be smiling is it okay yeah we can go ahead okay perfect all right okay uh every particular month from when we've started a uh, tall elephant as an organization i always start with a beautiful illustration on one side the other side we keep it open for you because you need to know what fuels you what is it that makes you feel like you're ready for a month or for a year this is how every year begins with for the uh, for the 2024 right all of you will have the spread this could be a note it could be a doodle it could be a picture it could be a word anything which makes you feel like this is what's going to fuel me this is what's going to make me complete 2024 in all honesty the way that i want to live it in you can go ahead and put it down here one thing that i do in this spread is i put a lot of pictures when i say i put a lot of pictures i put pictures of things that i visualize when i say i visualize i don't like putting vision board pictures of somebody else of some other car something else no i don't believe in doing that what i actually put down here is to relive happy moments that i've kind of lived in because those i can connect to i for me personally i cannot connect to any magazine pictures put out there so i put out all the happy moment pictures which kind of make me feel good and i feel like if there is an opportunity i want such kind of happy moments to come back in my life i also put a picture of me as a 8 year old kid that i was because that kind of reminds me about my journey every time i can kind of come back and flip onto the sheet it shows me that i've actually grown from who i was then to where i am now it's not necessarily it's a 8 year old because i remember at that particular point of time in my life there was something specific that happened so i know that when i when i remember myself in that age i feel like oh i know how i felt but in in the honor of that girl i kind of keep everything and i say i'm making it better for myself clear so it's your choice it really really is your choice i'm telling you how i do it you can put a picture you can also do just a word a lot of times many of us go with quotes a few of us feel like no i think an art illustration or a doodle will help me whatever makes sense to you use that create it that way now could i have given you how long do you think it takes for us to add another illustration here that doesn't make sense right it should be yours it should be something you like it should be your own journey that's why we given you this as an empty spread clear got it understood okay clear good <laughs> i think i'm going to spend time with you people a lot on building this one today i think we'll spend the next 20 minutes in doing these two spreads together and then we will talk about the rest later okay okay here's the thing about the vision board i think many of you must have already done vision boards those of you who have done vision boards can you just raise your hand and tell me that you've done it you've done it as a kid or sometime in your past how many of you have done a vision board in the past raise your hand just so many of you oh, come on what have the rest of you done you don't know what a vision board is you've never done one <laughs> okay all right so here's the thing okay what a vision board basically does is this a vision board is basically you trying to sit and visualize a future for yourself and say how does this future look like for me what is it that i want to have for myself in the future which looks like it's a dream but i know that it can become a reality 
Now, uh, people look at vision boards as manifestation boards. People look at vision boards as saying, okay, uh, this is something that I'm going to keep it as a dream board. It can be an extension of anything. I'll tell you what do I mean by it and I'll tell you how to look at it. Whenever we look at vision boards, right, one thing that I've seen people uh, fundamentally do and go wrong many a times is we draw vision boards for ourselves only from two sectors, the personal life and the professional life, where we say, okay, I want to become a mom this year, I want to probably uh, get, uh, get this much financially independent, or this is the amount of money I want to make, or this is the kind of school I want to send my kids to, or this is what I want to do, I want to get married, I want to do something else, like, you know, you, I, I'm pretty sure you have a big list of things, things that you want to buy, the homes that you want to be in, all of that is your personal and your professional thing. Do you agree with me? Whenever you think about your vision board, I think that's where we go into. What I want you to do is, before we go ahead and talk about all of this, can you take a moment for yourself? And if you've done the dream board from the RISE community, pull that out. Or if you haven't done it too, doesn't matter, sit down and ask yourself, what do you want for yourself from 2024? Put them down as a word. You don't have to do it on this journal itself. Take out a sheet of paper and start putting it down. I'll help you to create a vision board that you can really use and achieve by the end of the year. Okay, so can you make sure that you uh, that you all sit down and do the uh, things that you really want to achieve for yourself in 2024? Yeah, put that down. I'm going to give you five minutes to complete it and then we'll speak. Okay, stay with yourself. Okay, don't worry about the difference between personal self, professional, nothing. Just write what are the things that you want to achieve. I will then help you with how to bifurcate it and what to do with it. Don't worry about it right now. It can be in there for the question that you sent me, it can be. But do you want to do it as a choice? Take your time, don't rush through it, but sit down and think about it because this is a good time to reflect. Post three minutes, I'm gonna to respond to your questions. I don't wanna disturb you guys.
Good. When you're done, can you just visually show me a thumbs up so I know you're finished? I'm going to wait for a minute more for the rest of you to finish, but no hurry. You don't have to finish it completely, okay? It's just for us to start and get a direction. Take a minute more and then we'll continue. Okay, good. We at least have one thing in our vision board, I'm assuming. Yes, nod your head and tell me if it's yes or no. Yeah, okay, good. Now I'll tell you how to go about with all three. Now, yeah, I think there have been a few of you who have been asking consistently about the recording. Ah, okay. So here's the thing. Last year, we did go ahead and do recordings, but I've seen how my community goes back and uses recordings. What your people tend to do is you'll play it and you'll not do anything about it. Ideally, I want your people here in the session and participating. However, because these are the setup sessions for once, I think I'm okay to share it out with all of you. So we will share the recording for all of you for the setup sessions. But however, stay committed to coming for the uh, master classes, okay? Because I'll tell you why we want you to come back for your master classes. I'll tell you why are we saying what uh, you know to keep, to stay in touch with the community. Is many a times when we are trying to build a habit, the main reason that we let go of the habit is because we are not accountable to anybody. And if it feels like it's a lonely journey, it feels like I don't know if I'll be able to complete it or no. When we have seen people consistently working together in a community, you stay accountable to yourself saying, oh, I think it's possible because I see my friends are able to do it. I know that somebody else is also doing it. It becomes more easier to do it together. And every once a month, we set up these set up calls, we set up these master classes, so it becomes easier for all of you. But what happens is somehow on that day is where 80% of you will have emergencies. I don't know how all of you will have an emergency happening on the same day. And then we start getting emails saying, you know, can you make sure that you send us the recording? I'll not be there, which only shows that you do not respect yourself enough. I will never take it as you don't respect me. I'll take it as for you. You are not a priority because in these sessions, we talk only about you your habits and your things. If you cannot prioritize yourself, I might also not want to give you a recording. But if you people will stay committed, this time I will give you the recordings for a cup for the setup sessions, definitely. Let's see how many of you will turn up for the January masterclasses. Depending on that, we will take a call. Is that okay? So you will get access to all the setup uh, sessions that we're doing. That doesn't mean tomorrow you run away, okay? Come tomorrow also. So because I told you, you're like, okay, she'll put out the video, I'll go sit and watch it. I'll beat you people up if I see you somewhere. Okay, coming back to what we said, uh, okay, about the dates of the uh, of the masterclasses. For the first quarter, the dates have been fixed. We want to send you an email, but we felt like there's too many emails that we keep sending you with too many details. We did not want to bombard it. So the next email that you're going to get is for you people to join telegram groups we, all of you will go join telegram to get access to the community in that community we will post about all the dates we will post about everything that's going to happen join the telegram group why are we on telegram and not any other social media platform we chose to do it on telegram for two two reasons one the identity of the person remains uh, private to yourself so you don't have to bother about it the second thing is i think it also allows us to share pictures of what we want to do but we will make sure that we have good moderators because the pictures will definitely help for us to figure out and get ideas of how to make it more creative and how to use and be there for each other to support each other okay but all of you will not be going into one group there will be multiple different groups that you will be pushed into whichever your email guides you to go ahead into that group you'll get access to all the details from there you will never be told saying buy this buy that because i think on telegram there's another thing that happens saying okay kripalni sent you asking you for money somebody else asks you nobody is asking you for money tall elephant will not, not ask you for money so never ever go into that thinking okay tall elephant sent something no if there is something we'll come and communicate to you over an email clear that's the only a thing that I've seen on the downside of Telegram. Okay, coming back to what we were talking about here. Um, now again, about the group, you'll get everything on email. Patience, we will send you everything. Stay patient, we will give you all the details. Uh, 
Okay, apparently somebody put a WhatsApp group invite on chat. Fantastic. People, <laughs> don't don't try doing all these stupid things. It's it's unfair. No, you're coming into a learning environment and you try putting it out saying, uh, you know, trying trying to do things like that only shows how bad and corrupted you are within yourself. Please do not do that. It kind of, you know, puts pushes people into wrong places. Thank you. And yeah, Krishna, if you did it by mistake or whoever it was, thank you for acknowledging. So please don't do it. Okay, coming back to what we were talking about. Um, when you look at a vision board, whatever that you have written down in your sheet of paper, you will have uh, a lot of things which will do, do with, you know, things like I want to buy this car this year, I want to probably professionally get this kind of an increment, I want to get this kind of a job, or you might also be writing stuff like I want to get married, I want to figure out certain things in life, makes sense, yeah, maybe you would have written all of that down for yourself. What's important uh, is to understand why vision boards don't work. Why vision boards usually do not work and there is only that over hype at the beginning of the year saying, hey, I'm going to make a vision board and I'm going to achieve it and thereafter it doesn't work is because these look very detached from yourself. It doesn't look like there is anything to do with yourself. I'll tell you what I mean by it. And one example that I really like quoting when I'm talking about this is this. Like, let's say this year you've chosen to learn to drive a car. That's what is your that's what is the is one of the things that you would have written for yourself in the personal goal. I want you to ask yourself, why do you want to really learn to drive a car? Why? Why are you looking at wanting to learn to drive a car? Many a times it's not the driving of the car that you're really looking for. What you really need is for you to learn to become independent for yourself. You do not want to be dependent on somebody else. When you write just learning to drive a car and by mistake, if this does not happen, then you feel like everything else will collapse because it's a domino effect. But when you connect it to yourself and you say, I want to learn to become independent, maybe you learn not to drive, but maybe you learn to get a driver for yourself. That too will make you feel, okay, I did a pretty decent job. If you write something which is like way far apart and this and that feels disconnected, that's when you feel like this is not an achievable thing. And when you extrapolate it, you start saying that you're not good enough. And you'll start calling yourself all the meanest things, telling yourself that you're useless. And because one goal didn't go your way, it feels like all the other things will fall apart. Many a times you might have also written saying, you know, personal goals. I'll give you examples. I want to become a mother this year. Why? Why? Do you know why do you want to actually have a child? Have you asked yourself, are you ready to have a child? For what reason do you really want to have a child? It could be because you want to please somebody. It could be societal norms. Are you ready to become a mom? Are you ready to become a dad? Ask yourself that question. Whatever comes to your mind saying, what is it that you're looking for? Many a times it might be saying, you know, I really love nurturing and caring for somebody. Write that. Nurturing and caring. Maybe this year things look like that I do not get pregnant. But can I nurture and care for something else in the world today to make me feel that maternal instinct? Are you with me? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Or does it sound like Greek and Latin? You're getting it, right? You're understanding? Okay. Now, um, okay, I want to sort out things with my partner. Let's say you, you've been having a very bad conversation. Why? What do you mean by sort out? What is your definition of sort out? Why do you want it sorted out in that format only? Many a times when there are fights happening, all of us say we want to sort it out. Well, how do you want to sort it out? What is your definition of sorting out? What does that mean to you? Ask yourself. Whatever that it means to you is what sits on self. You, you are basically looking for a compassionate partner. Maybe this is not that partner who is your compassionate partner. So you need to relook at saying, what are you looking for? Because many a times you, it looks like fancy things here, but you need to go deeper and ask yourself, what are you looking for? And if it means you're looking for somebody compassionate in your life, maybe it's not necessarily it's your partner alone. You can get a compassionate friend too. You can find compassion in your life by doing a lot of social work too. Then maybe you'll kind of tweak this and add another thing to it. I don't know if it sounds like, oh, Kripalni, it's too complex. It's not complex, but neither is it too easy. If you keep this superficial, that's where it kind of becomes very difficult. 
if you go deeper is when you will know like for example somebody shared with me saying i think for the first time i heard this heard a person ask me this in a setup session saying what if i want to say um i don't want to be anxious and fearful in front of a person such a beautiful thing right we never think about it we always think from these two perspectives i don't want to feel anxious and i don't want to be fearful is a very strong self perspective for god sake build it if you are one of those people you see a disconnect here does not matter this is what is what is your vision board in reality not this we usually think it's this and this it's not this and this it's this i'll give you examples of professional life too okay when we look at professional life i want to get i want to get what i want to get promoted this year why why do you think you have to get promoted why ask yourself i deserve it why do you think you deserve it why what are you looking for you see when you go deeper is when you'll understand the happiness of what you what are you going to get out of it by understanding yourself a little more otherwise it looks like you will chase that goal that goal will not be enough then with before you know it the goal would have changed before you know it something else would have happened and you would be behaving like a maniac not knowing why are you chasing which goal clear did you understand all of this that's how you build your vision board what i want you to do is yeah it's like a homework that i'm giving you you got to sit down with yourself today till i meet you tomorrow try and fill this up you don't have to complete everything but try to fill it up so you at least know where are you heading towards many a times you'll get stuck here's the way that you unblock yourself ask yourself why why do i want it these things specially you know to do with your professional achievements here's a little secret based on psychology this is to do with your inner child itself this is to do with you understanding what does it feel like pleasure what does it feel like shame whatever you feel like oh my god i don't want to get shamed on this is what you might be trying to avoid is what you might be trying to look for in terms of your pleasure which is your achievement saying i want to be be able to achieve it like this imagine you achieve it like that when that trophy comes to your hand whatever that you're looking for the happiness that you feel that day is exactly how a teenager would have felt as a teenager so if you feel there is a disconnect from here to here you're not able to get it there will be a connection to do with your teenage life so you remember when we spoke about uh, nucleus acubin in the rice community people this is what we're trying to talk about that is why this connection is important clear did all of you get this okay and then this one is again from a very good psychologist that i think has done a fantastic job in creating uh, you can go read about level 10 goals i can talk only about level 10 goals for 10 different days and we can just do sessions only on this but however we will do it a little quickly for you to understand what this is and how to go about with it level 10 goals is one of those things that really helps you to figure out how do you bring contentment in life this is not about happiness but this is about learning to be blissful and learning to have a balanced life now how do you build a balanced life how is it that you learn to become content in life usually what happens is we chase one of these goals if you go into the sheet you'll be able to see it yourself ask yourself before i go ahead and tell me which are your goals that you actually chase do you chase all 10 or which one is the one that you actually chase the most put that for me in the chat the second one okay finances okay what else do you chase health okay career okay what do you chase in the 10 what do you chase finance career family and friends personal development health and fitness fun spirituality okay good <laughs> good i like what your people are telling here's the thing if you want to really lead a content balanced life you lead it when you have your life revolving around 10 sectors in your life usually what happens is because my career is getting screwed up what do i do i tend to not go for my run i'm like it's okay today i just have to rest it's okay i i can miss the family gathering that's not important or because something's going wrong in my personal life i tend to screw up the rest of the things in my life this is how you learn to draw boundaries and say my life is not defined by just one thing i or me and myself means all these 10 things yes maybe this year there is a divorce that's happening but that divorce is one part of my life 
the remaining nine parts of my life, I still need to be able to get better. I still need to wake up in the morning and do my health and fitness. I still need to wake up in the morning and do my little spiritual activity. That's when you know that the divorce is not consuming you. It's one part of your life. It's one compartment of your life. But the rest of the wheels of the life of your life needs to keep going forward. Are you with me? Did you understand this? Now, which are those areas? Few people say it's five. Few, few people say it's three. No, I think it's all the 10 that's been put out here. Why did I say all 10? It's, I think if you look at it, it's life. It's one thing. You need more parameters to be pulled mm -hmm. out so it becomes easier for you to visually see ask yourself what do you want to achieve in 2024 in these areas personally my suggestion do not set high goals on everything how do you set up these goals i'll talk to you about it but what's important for you to note is do not set up high goals on everything maybe on two categories you really know 2024 is going to get defined by it two of them the remaining eight you don't make it zero you still put effort to get better. That's when you become a wholesome person. Otherwise, imagine just because you go into the gym and you keep working out just one hand and you come out and you say, at, at the end of 2024, you have a big bicep here. What happened to the rest of your body? Right? As stupid as it sounds, that's exactly what we do with our lives. We only focus on one thing and forget about the rest of the things. And especially if it is pain induced, especially if it is to do with something which has sarcasm, if it has something to do with uh, things which go into hyper arousal or panic, anxiousness or anything like that, you go on a trip with yourself, focusing and following and doing just one stupid thing and then you're gone. The rest of the nine things in your life is gone and then you say, this one person screwed up my life. My boss, my that, my this, this person screwed up. No, no, no. You screwed up your life by yourself. That person induced it in one category of your life. The remaining nine still is in your hands. Clear? Got it? Okay. I want to talk to you about a few more things. Let me just access a paper. Okay. Now, a few things that you need to understand um, about what we spoke about till now quickly is... When you look at when I said the self part and when I spoke to you about the professional part, right? Like, let's say this is you. We usually tend to say, oh my God, Kripalni, you know, with me, I have my personal life. I'm so damn sure about my personal life. These are my people. These are my circuit. I know very clearly. And this is my society, Kripalni. This is my professional life. And probably here is my entire society, Kripalni. I know how to disconnect. No, you don't. If you do not have another inner circle, which is private. When I say private, what I'm trying to tell you is it's not about you and your partner in your private life. No, this is you and only you. Do you know how to have a relationship with yourself? Do you know how to sit with yourself? Have you healed yourself? Have you spent time with yourself? Do you know how to have a conversation with yourself? Do you know how to be your own best friend? Do you know how to be your own cheerleader? This is what is the self portion that I was talking to you about. If this is strong, no, if something goes wrong here, this person can handle. Something goes wrong here, you can handle. What, what do we do? We remove this completely. We keep letting this go away. And one fine day, if this topples away, we say, oh my God, I toppled down. No, this is your foundation. If your foundation is not strong, that's why the homes tend to kind of fall apart. All that beautiful building that you're showing off to the world, you know one thing is enough if somebody just takes something and beats it down the entire thing will collapse down because the foundation is not strong that's why that anger comes out that's why the, you know you behave like the way that you behave because this is not strong that's why I told you in the vision board please spend time on making sure that you build this right whatever you're writing you have your personal you have your professional ask yourself why do you want to do it that's the most important thing got it did you understand this okay now, um, the second part. Okay, everyone who's talking about rice, please give some time. We will talk about it. This is not about rice. This is about everything else. This is not about rice, okay? Now, the goals when we talk about it, always make sure, don't write things. Like I've seen many people. Um, okay, I'm going to keep this open. Or hey, you people have your journal with you, no? I don't have to open this, right? Okay, you, you look at your journal. I will look at my sheet and I'll explain. Whenever I tell people, no, saying, okay, what's your health and fitness goal? Let me ask you. Tell, or you, you people tell me. Let's see what you'll say. Tell me what's your health and fitness goal. Tell me what's your goal. 
what would you write in your health and fitness goal practice yoga become energetic do a cartwheel uh, drinking more water joining a gym okay do yoga and meditation lose weight perfect become fit perfect okay get rid of something do walking yoga 100 list was there track your meals okay good all of this is great the problem why we do not chase goals and we don't know if we achieved it or no is because it's as generic as what you've written down there become fit what do you mean by become fit what's the definition of become fit your definition will keep changing every month you need to really tell yourself what do you mean by becoming fit and how do you tell yourself like how they set okrs for you at work or you have your kras and kpis at work what's the secret of okrs and kras and kpis is they don't randomly just say become a better employee is that what they tell you what what is the common thing of okrs and kras and kpis what's the common thing of them how are those set for you basically they are all measurable right you know what is it that they are expecting you need to make sure your goals too are measurable you need to make sure whatever you write it should be able to be measured i'll give you examples of all of them i'll tell you how to measure it but here's the thing whenever you're setting a goal always make sure that they are smart goals when i say smart goals i've written that word also for you in your journal and i've given it to you it's there in the fr sheet front and center but if you would want to know don't write random things like i want to look like karina kapoor that's not simple line to understand karina kapoor in which movie in every movie she looks very different right so you need to make sure that it is simple simple to understand probably if you if you really are chasing to look like her right in this particular movie i want to look like her like this so it's simple it's easier to understand it should be measurable saying when i say that i want to look like her also say what do you mean by look like her everything your skin your size your uh, you know you know your measurements what are you looking for now you see i'm probably looking for losing weight that's all i'm looking for how much should you weigh at the end of the year put that number and this should be action oriented whenever you're looking for it there should be something that you can kind of write it as an action and it should be achievable it can't be like oh i want to go to mars tomorrow tomorrow mars really how many kilometers you'll write but is it achievable it is probably achievable not for you but for other other people what is attainable for you you have to write that saying okay i'm looking at losing 10 kg of weight by the end of 2025 2024 or i'm looking at losing 3 kg of weight by the end of the first quarter achievable attainable right and then whatever you're looking for should be result oriented you should be able to say did you do it or did you not do it it should only be a yes or a no there is no in between and it should always be time bound otherwise that's where you skip why do you skip is you'll write everything in the beginning oh super fantastic vision boards will be there how do you convert your vision board to becoming um a goal for yourself is this health and fitness i'll give you examples of everything okay i'll give you examples of everything that can go in health and fitness please for god sake don't write just the physical health look at your emotional health too and ask yourself what is it that you're trying to look for in terms of achieving this year it's uh, whatever i told you here it could be relevant or we also call it as result oriented so it's your choice if it's called achievable here i call it action oriented here so it basically changes in two forms that i only say it so coming back to this look at health and fitness in terms of what will you call yourself as a healthy person how will you call yourself as a fit person in 2024 it need not have to be 10 kg on the weighing scale if you want to you can also change it to whatever your lipid profiles are you can change this to if you want to look at it in terms of how how many times are you going to go get your medical test done whatever are those things for yourself do it don't set 20 kg here 5 crores here and probably getting your divorce also this year it becomes extremely difficult you are a human being please treat yourself like one so don't set three major goals figure out which two areas you want based on that the rest of it you need to move it around and create it for yourself when you create 10 huge boulders that's when it becomes difficult clear so yeah so your health and fitness could be as simple as saying i'm going to do probably 5000 steps a month 
hint, hint, 10,000 steps a month for the rice people, whatever that makes sense for you. So whatever it is that you want to do in terms of your health and fitness, it could be steps, it could be you getting your test done, it could be you saying that I want to kind of get into the weighing scale numbers, it could be your lipid profiles, it could be you saying these many Surya Namaskars a week, this is what I want to kind of achieve, you can go ahead and write all of that. I will talk to you about tiny habits, mini habits, atomic habits and elastic habits tomorrow, but set the goal first, don't worry about will I be able to achieve it or not achieve it. Personal development is how are you going to make sure you continue your learning. Why do you have to continue your learning? If you do not learn, you do not become a better individual, not just in terms of your skill, the way your brain utilization is, itself will change. So if you look at, you know, the ca London cab drivers that we spoke about during the session, for all of you who understand it, it's a skill. When you kind of build it up, your brain actually becomes better. Every year, give yourself a challenge to learn something new. It could be books that you read, the number of books you're going to read, a language that you're going to build to learn. It could be a newer uh, challenge that you pick up for yourself as a skill. It could be art, it could be knowledge, or it can be a skill. Clear? You can give one for each one of them art form that you'll learn, a knowledge form you'll learn, a skill form you'll learn, or it can just be one. It really depends on which is your major category. For me, always, this is my major category. I spend a lot of time here. The rest of the things kind of goes around in the rest of the categories. Clear? Okay. This one is your finances. How much money do you want to make? How much money do you want to save? How much money do you want to let go? Sit with yourself and create that. Career, what do you really want? Finally, Tell what do you really want? Do you want to change your job? Are you looking for a certain number? What is it that you want to do this year for yourself in 2024? Set that goal for yourself. Family and friends, um, the toxicity, it could be as simple as staying away from toxic people to building newer relationships to figuring out how will you host certain kind of people to making sure how will you and your family get better make them all measurable it can be anything okay other relationships usually is sexual relationships or you can also read this as your professional relationships it's basically your choice how do you want to rephrase it because few of us make friends at work few of us keep professional life very differently so it really depends on you Whatever that it means to you, create a goal for yourself in this category, saying, how do you want to take care of yourself in this category? Spirituality is, I spoke to you about it earlier. It's all to do with how will you build yourself as a person in your spiritual practice. Please build the habit of spirituality. Whatever it means to you, please do it every single day, like how your nani, nana, dada, dadi, grandma, amama, nanama, whoever taught you, please get back to that habit because that's the only way that we actually learned how to be hopeful in life. Somehow, when we go into our spiritual practice because we learned it as kids, we tend to surrender quickly. This is the only time your amygdala keeps quiet. This is the only time you drop. But for that to happen, you have to get to doing your practice. So for God's sake, start doing this. Okay. Giving and contributions is another thing. If you, if you understand Adlerian psychology, Adlerian psychology talks about how does a human being really be happy? The uh, Adlerian psychology is one of those which actually talks about the human tendency and human philosophy and psychology in a very beautiful way. If you have read The Courage to be Disliked, one of the things that that book ends with is talking about how you will actually feel real happiness or you will actually feel happy when you feel you are useful for somebody else. Whatever it means to you of saying how do you think you are useful to somebody else, put that in your giving and contributions. A lot of us tend to write here saying, I will donate this much money. Donating money is not the thing. That will not give you happiness. It just feels like, okay, I just gave it away. I think this should be time bound. Saying what in terms of time? Five hours this, this year, I'm going to spend on some social work. I will volunteer for something. It really depends on who you are as a person. Please go ahead and do that and stop doing this money business with a lot of things. I know NGOs today push for it, but I am telling you in all honesty with all the social work that I've done, please stop giving money. I think NGOs also played that play that card. Stop the money business. Start volunteering for you to really understand what's happening out in the world and the amount of 
kindness that you will receive back towards yourself, not just from others, but the self kindness that you will feel for yourself, the warmth you'll feel in your chest. There's no match to it when you go volunteer. Go clean the streets. You complain so much, no? Please go cl clean the streets. And yeah, all of you, uh, the, if you can't do anything, I'll give you examples. Talk to people who are on the customer service nicely. Oh, the arrogance of you, a few people throw. I'm like, from where does this arrogance come? Do you people, what, what happens, no? When you see someone inferior, we think that person is inferior in many ways. And somebody taught you inferiority bias or a superiority bias, and you throw that weight around when you see somebody inferior. You really want to become a good human being, leave all of this. If you can take a year break, focus only on this. That's when you'll actually become a good human being. It's not about how do you treat people whom you know? How do you treat people who are strangers? That is what shows who you are as a person. Not how you treated somebody who you know very well, your boss, your employees. No, talk to a stranger with a kind and compassionate heart. That's when you'll know who you are. And oh my God, I'll give you a lot of examples that I've seen and heard from my own customer relations team with all the things that people write back to them. And the moment I pick up the phone and I say it's Kripalni, the voice completely changes. Why? I am part of the organization, right? Why is it that you talk to me differently? That shows a lot about who we are becoming today. Never give the power to Kripalni too. If you think Kripalni is wrong, the organization is wrong. Kripalni belongs to that organization. If you change your voice, then you know why you changed your voice. That shows saying, because you thought somebody is inferior. I hope you will learn to become bigger people, become bigger people with strangers, not just my organization. My organization will deal with it. I am there. I back them. I take care of them. But what I'm trying to tell you is, please be kind and considerate towards everyone. Only when you are considerate towards a stranger is when you really are a good person inside. Okay. And fun and recreation is yeah, not writing saying, okay, for me, fun is I'll go watch, watch a movie with friends. Wait, if your friends don't come, then what will you do? If your husband does not take you, then what will you do? You have to create a plan for yourself saying, what does fun and recreation look like for you? Okay. In terms of environment, this could be as simple as I have one, like, you know, I, I have one person who's there in my own community. For her, if my plant does not die, she's taken care of the environment. Her only goal is I have to keep this plant alive. It could be as simple as that. To you saying, I'm going to plant 100 plants. If you plant it, take care of it. Don't get into these drives of saying, on my birthday, 100 plants were kept somewhere. What happened to those plants? Are you even aware? Your people will just donate and let go of the money. Have you taken care of it? Instead of doing it like that, there are five trees in front of your home or in that street of yours. No, go water them. If you really want to do something, do things like that. What I'm trying to tell you is, please do things around this. Why is environment also a part of it? Is because this is what makes you feel calmer within yourself. Each one of this is to do with a certain emotion. Because we're coming to the end of the session, I'll talk more about these emotions and everything tomorrow. There's so much to share. I've been talking from that time and I haven't stopped, but still I haven't finished things that I wanted to share. Anyways, so you understood this, right? So create for yourself smart goals in each one of them. Now, how do you start using a journal? It's not like saying, oh, last minute, may take a journal and start writing whatever comes to your mind. You want to do it the right way. Do it the way that I'm trying to explain it to you. Clear? Understood this? So can, can you all try for my sake to try doing the level 10 goals and the vision board by tomorrow? Can you kind of work on this and come back so that we can spend time tomorrow kind of going back and forth on this and then I'll definitely help you with the rest of the spreads. Okay, great. Perfect. Now I'm going to pause the session here. I know that there are many, 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 many questions that your people had. If you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. Do not put it in the chat because that chat kind of goes haywire. I will not know who asked, who said what. And you can use the raise hand option and you can ask. I'll definitely help you out. And yeah, all of you have been asking about uh, RISE. RISE is basically my own community of people who have come and who, who come to me to train 
train about emotional intelligence and people who are working on their emotional resilience. It's a smaller bunch of people who have chosen to work on themselves. And this is as big as 110 people. So I like working in smaller groups. And if you're really interested to join RISE, you can get onto my uh, website, kripalaniswami.com. You'll get all the details about it. You can go pick up there and we can talk about it thereafter. Don't ask me rice related questions here. Uh, we will talk about it probably tomorrow if we have time, but anything to do with your journal or anything that I spoke about today, please feel free to ask. The rest of it, I will definitely talk to you about it uh, tomorrow, the rest of the components, okay? And if you're leaving, don't leave without telling me uh, how did you feel, what, what really happened. And yeah, one important thing, nobody is leaving. I want one thing from all of you, okay? There is a post which is going to go up on the Tall Elephant page on Instagram. Once you finish this session, I want all of you, give me a commitment and promise to go there and tell me what is your takeaway from today's session. What is it that you learned and what are you taking away? The reason I'm asking you to do that is for two things. Those of them who did not turn up for the session, only 300 of you turned up today. So it pinches the rest of them saying, hey, I should have been there in the session. And the second thing is, I really want to know what you people are have taken back. If there is something which is missing, it helps me to modulate tomorrow's session differently. Okay, so can you all make sure that you go back onto that uh, Instagram page and write this for me? I'll come and see each one of your comments. Okay, perfect. Um, Okay, Vidya, we'll start with you and then I'll go to the rest of the people. I'm calling out names who have raised their hand. I will uh, definitely, definitely love to answer all of your questions. I'll do my best to answer everybody's. Nine o'clock sharp is tea time. I'm stopping at nine. The rest of the questions I'll answer tomorrow if in case we don't finish today. Okay, all right. Vidya, hi. Uh, hi, uh, this is the first time I have uh, bought this little black box and also listening to you. I've been secretly following you on Instagram um, <laughs> and I'm so I grateful did. that I, oh, I'm sorry, I am I have a bad cold and no. I'm not ready to show my no, beautiful sure. face on video just yet, <laughs> maybe in a couple more days. Sure. Oh, the, one quick question I had for you is... Yeah. <clears throat> Um, I want to go back and listen to certain parts of this recording yeah. as I continue to journal in my box, uh, yeah. in my book. Will the recording be available as quickly as possible or would that take some time? Okay. Uh, I think it should be available as quickly as possible. I'm just waiting for my team to send me a message here telling me what is their timeline because I don't want to commit to something that they don't tell. I don't think there is anything to be edited from what I said with you. Usually what happens is I'm waiting for you people from my team to respond the timeline so I can commit to her. I'm telling you the back-end process. The back-end process is we usually edit things that should not be shared. But yeah, I don't think there is any addition, uh, edits that we need to do here. We need to just relook at everything and then mark saying from which chapter, chapter starts where because few of us will need those chapters, right? I think we'll make sure in two days that it is available for you. Is that is that okay with you? If you give it us in two days, right, then yeah. it becomes a little bit of a challenge uh, as I'm trying to complete the quote unquote homework you've given us. <laughs> uh, because, <laughs> but that's okay. If that's your timeline, that's your timeline. So it's no, yeah. no big yeah. deal. We'll, okay. we'll work around okay. that. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. just try working around. And if you still have questions tomorrow, definitely I'll help you out. Uh, but yeah, I think they have to mark the chapters. So they'll mark the chapters and then we will make sure we put it out. I'll also try uh, making sure that they do it a little more quickly. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. And before and I hop off. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And before okay. I hop off, you you just light up the space and thank you for thank you. being such a beautiful energy thank you it means a lot thank you uh -huh. okay hema over to you hi ma'am hi hema what's I'm, up i'm fine uh well basically like you you explained a lot about the vision board but still yeah. like i am kind of confused like how to Kind of the self and like you know, the, the personal. Personal. I'm personal is usually to do with you and people around you, Hema. Self is to do with only you. You remember that circles that I drew? I said, I want to be a mom. Mom means it's probably not just me. There is another soul 
as a part of it right that person also should be willing either to donate their sperms or they should be willing to make a baby with me it could be a person it could be a family ask yourself first why do you want to be a mom what is it that you're looking for you want to have that nurturing you have that nurturing energy in you you're trying to do that like i was explaining that's a self saying i want to be a nurturer this year so even if i don't make a baby if by chance i give in to all those causes which makes me feel like i'm a nurturer maybe the god did not give me that uh, that blessing of a baby but because i am looking for becoming a nurturer some way i will be able to build it so i can have, yeah but this does it mean like you know i'll put forth the personal and the professional goals and yeah. from that i come to self right deep correct. Up- yeah yeah correct you usually it's more easier to start with personal and professional first and then come towards self but for the first time in my session somebody asked from the self perspective first which is brilliant which is where we actually want to be but yeah start with personal professional because it just easily comes out saying i want to do this i want to do that ask why 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 are you chasing that why do you want it why that car only many a times it might not be just that car it's something unhealed within you that you're trying to look for whatever that is fix that okay all right so the personal professional first okay fine ma'am this want to highlight this actually december has been a very overwhelming month for me like you know yeah, yeah. i had some few issues and i was yeah. actually very very down i was not able to like work on my december challenge but oh. when i start for this session right i feel like i'm getting back all that like you know <laughs> good good and many a times what happens also is hema october november december is because it's cold for many of us we kind of freeze to yours is not a freeze response i know who you are yours is not a freeze response but for many of us october november december we freeze too because we do also don't go out in sunlight vitamin d deficiency vitamin d kind of again not being there kind of affects your emotional well being that kind of affects how do you feel physically feel and it becomes a cycle so we don't want to exercise we don't want to do things we're just binge eating we're just doing things so that too can happen but hemas is a very different situation she, because she said december all of you don't get on to the same bandwagon saying hey, it could be me also like that hers is very different yours could be to do with how the weather is kind of affecting you the only way for the rest of you is please unfreeze start walking start doing things physically when you move out like you're sitting and creating one nice karan johar movie in your head when you know you're sitting and playing that nonsense in your head get up take 10 steps the moment you take that 10 steps you'll be able to come back to yourself okay simple things simple easy things hey ma i'll talk to you i know what you spoke about i'll went i'll talk to you in the rice group bye ma'am thank you okay bye bye shri vidya hi Uh, yeah so uh, this is the first time i'm over here and uh, actually i found the vision board a little overwhelming yeah but i kind of started with it too so yeah. i actually understood now the difference between the self and the personal but i kind of overlapped it then already kind of put some stuff in it so should i i mean i didn't put images like you said i don't really resonate with uh, newspaper yeah. images and stuff so i just put yeah. stuff that i want to have in my life but they're not necessarily yeah. goals so is sure. that okay or what should i i mean no if you feel like you want to redo it shri vidya the best option could be take another sheet of paper cut it out close it off and redo it again because oh. if you feel like no i think now i got clarity of it remove it and put it down again trust me having more clarity here will help a long way shri vidya so definitely definitely uh, redo it again because now you have more clarity ha huh. and one more question is professional is especially with relation to the professional vision board yeah um i'm finding it a little difficult to understand the difference between having goals in my professional life versus having stuff in my vision board is it like the purpose of the goals is what i should be putting as my vision board like why do i have this particular goal uh, i think the goal itself could be just the professional goal the purpose of it like you rightly use that word the purpose goes into the self saying okay. why okay. got it like okay. for example um uh, it's not our okrs or our krs those are things that we are not even chasing in all honesty i think we're just getting to work and we're trying to do what we want to do but asking yourself why are you still working for this organization or in this organization what are you trying to achieve or whatever your professional goal of wanting to get to a certain place ask yourself why why do you want to do it how does that help you it'll definitely help you to find your answer
Okay, thanks a lot. And just one last question. I uh, I wanted to ask if we will be having monthly masterclass sessions like yes. this for this particular yes. journey, yes. even yes. if I'm whether I, I'm part of the rise or the other group or no. not. No, your master classes definitely will continue like this. This uh, so okay. This is how it happens because she asked. It's a good question. We start in December. We end in November. So we finish the twenty twenty three last master class in November. We always uh, have master classes happening every particular month, and we also give you the tentative dates. But however, many a times it's not just me who is the speaker. We also get doctors. We get psychologists to come and speak to you people. If their dates do not match with what's happening. Then in those cases, we change the dates and we announce the dates too. So you'll have access to all of it. But yeah, every once a month, we definitely meet at the end of the month. The first three dates, I think they will put it out soon. Great. I'm a, actually, I also did industrial psychology. So I really, really appreciate your aspect and how you looked at it. Because sometimes when I read about manifestation and all that, it seems a little, I'm sorry to say this, it seems a little out there. I but this, this makes a lot more sense to me. So thank you very much. And I'm looking Most forward to future sessions. Thank sure. you. Yeah, most welcome. And yeah, anytime you, you want to ask, say, Kripali, why the hell is this here? It's not for beauty purpose. Any of you can just question me and say, what's the psychology of this? I will spend enough time to tell you what's the psychological reason of why it's there. Okay. Yeah, I'm very happy to know Shri Vidya. Thank you. Thanks. Manu? Manu? Mm, yeah, hi. Uh, hi. hi, it was a wonderful session. Uh, uh, I, I'll just jump to the question quickly so that <laughs> people get time. Uh, yeah, so uh, in the goal setting page, uh, when you said uh, you should also set mental health goals, I was yeah. having a little difficulty in, uh, like, could you give me an example of a smart goal in terms of mental health? Okay. Like, uh, it's very really difficult to have a... Yeah, so I think mm -hmm. the mental health, especially in our country, Manu, are you residing in India? Oh. Yeah. Okay, so mental health, especially in, in India, I think has become a very cliche word, okay? Cliche to an extent of when a celebrity talks about it, it feels like, hey, okay, so yeah, it's normal, it's okay, but it's very abnormal for us to connect to what the celebrities speak. But however, if you look at the statistics today, I think every one in four of us have something happening to us mentally, which is not a healthy form. Yeah. There is some form of illness which exists. It's not necessarily, it's it's like bipolar disorder or depression, clinical depression. There are multiple other things that happens also to a human being. Yeah. Now, what's happening today is we do not have good emotional hygiene. Like, for example, we know physically what all to do. I can do yoga, I can do boxing, I can do walking, I can do cartwheels. Like I saw so many things. But nobody spoke about saying, what can I do for my emotional well-being? This could be you doing your meditation. This could be as simple as saying, I'm going to journal every single day. This could be emotional wellness uh, goals in terms of saying, okay, if you had to meet a therapist, how many times are you going to be meeting your therapy sessions? It could be as, as complex as that. It could be also saying, you know, probably you also want to kind of work on yourself. You know that there are a lot of shadows left back within yourself. This year, you want to unclog those shadows. Shadows are basically things which are stuck within yourself. Like, you know, there's a lot of guilt, shame, fear, uncertainty. You kind of want to get better with it. It could be that. It could be saying, I think I'm getting very bad with my anger management. My anger as a, I have anger issues. So this year, I'm going to make sure that, you know, my anger issues, you have to define the borders of it of saying, how is it that you're going to be accepting yourself in this? And if it needs, means that you need to get help, how will you get help? If you're going through panic attacks, what is it that you have to do for it? Have you done courses for it? It could be code, like, you know, going for a yoga class, going for something else. What are you going to do for your emotional well-being? Call that out. That's what's going to give you sanity. Talking to my mentor, like I know if I go to my mentor, that's a good place for me to be because my mentor kind of becomes my mirror for me. This, this person helps me out to become a better individual. I know that I've been procrastinating on it, but I want to get better. Whatever that is, you can put those. Got, got some idea, Manu? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay, all right. Shweta? Hi. Hey, hi, Kriplani. Hi, uh, hi Kriplani. Hi. Hi. Can, can hi. you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, I have one question in level 10 goals. For okay. example, say if my goal is lose weight. So yeah. what, do, what should I write in relevant part of it in the okay. SMART goals? All right. right. So when you say lose weight, Shweta, first let's start with understanding lose weight. How much weight do you want to lose? Can you help me with that? Like put a number to it. Um, maybe uh, 
20 kg okay <laughs> I want to lose 20 kgs of weight. By when do you want to lose 20 kgs of weight, Shweta? Maybe two to two years. Okay. So in two years, 20 kgs of weight, does it feel like it's relevant to you? Because I don't know. I'm just making an assumption and I'm going to speak right now. Okay. I might get pregnant. Then mm -hmm. is it still relevant? Uh, I think it's relevant because I feel that I'm overweight as per okay. my BMI. Yeah. So in that case, it's a relevant goal. Imagine for me, 20 kgs I'm trying to chase, but I know my during pregnancy, I cannot be doing those many activities to follow up. It's no more relevant for me in 2025. So I can't say for two years. Now I have to make it relevant for one year or up to pregnancy and post-pregnancy then maybe no. You see? For you, it's completely relevant. For me, it's probably not relevant. It really depends on where we are. So relevance is saying, is this something which is attainable for you? Is this something that you can relate to? Or does it feel like, okay, Kripalni wants to do it. I will also do it. No. Why is it relevant to you? What Do you feel like there's a calling for yourself in that? Then go ahead and do it. But don't just write saying this is what it is. And always, my suggestion is um, make them measurable in a way that you can measure it within the year. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Anything okay. else, Shweta? Thank you so much. No, no. That was that was the part I was thinking. How to put R in all these goals? Okay. 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 All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Go you. Hit. Bye. Bye. Hello. Am I audible? You are Rohini. Yes. Firstly, hello and a big hi and thank you for this little black box. I was for a very long time, I was thinking of journaling and I actually ordered another brand. But when I saw so many of things, so many, I cancelled the order. I asked for the refund and I immediately ordered. Oh my God. This. Okay. Please don't ask for a refund because it pinches my heart too. If somebody asks me for a refund, but yeah, okay. But it was hard. really worth it. It was really worth it when I actually saw the refund and everything. Okay. Coming yeah. back to the question. So I just have one question with the vision board thing. Yeah. Like I feel from within inside, like my communication should be more stronger with people yeah. for my personal development and overall development. So how can it relate to the self part of the vision okay. board? That's a very good question, Rohini. Now, when you say you want to have a stronger communication, what do you mean by it? Can you define it to me a little more? You want to be more vocal about it or is it about you standing up for yourself? What are you looking for? Not exactly standing up for myself because everything around me happens according to my wish, what I yeah. usually think. Sure. But just to see something different or with a different perspective, maybe. So how would you change seeing perspectives in terms of communication, Rohini? Can you help me with an example? What do you mean by it? Okay, for example, sometimes I don't feel that I'm putting up enough thoughts, maybe yeah. when I'm chatting with a friend or somebody else. Sure. So how do I improve on that? Like my okay. personal opinion. Why, why do you want to improve on that? Why do you want to improve on that? I think it will uh, make me feel more comfortable and relaxed from within. Uh, why do you think I that will give you comfort? Oh my God, that's like, a like, Think, Rohini. You need to ask yourself, why do you think it will give you more comfort? Don't worry about the rest of the people. It's me and you. Maybe I must have uh, filled more thoughts over thinking. Yeah, maybe that's maybe the one that... Yeah. yeah, because... Maybe over thinking that I want to just remove it. Yeah. So basically, maybe it's because you want to let go of your overthinking. Why do you want to let and go of your overthinking? Just Rohini? one thing that sometimes I feel that it is a part of me being anxious or yeah. having a certain kind of fear within myself yeah. yeah and that anxiousness and fear why do you think you have it oh uh, it is very personal that um, whenever i try to achieve something or whenever i'm focusing on something it do happen that i fell ill yeah be it the smallest of the exam be it the smallest of the exam even in childhood since childhood that's been the trend yeah so when whenever i used to give my exam be it scholarship i used to get ill just a day before or two yeah yeah so i think maybe that might be the connection so why do you think that's connected to communication your strong part to explain <laughs> 
Yeah. No, you see what I'm trying to say, Rohini. I'm just going backwards and asking myself, Connecting and think, why, why, why do I want to do it? And many a times this might be to do with something which is within myself. Like you rightly came to a situation where you know this has been happening to you in childhood. There is something which has been unhealed there. So what happens is we always project, see, whoever that we are, right? Today, if Kripalni speaks in a certain form and she looks at life in a certain form, it happens because of my sum total of my experiences and my choices that I've made in my life. That's what makes me who I am today. Now, if I'm feeling a certain way from at this moment in terms of my communication, it comes because of something that's happened in the past. I need to figure out what that is and try to figure out what am I trying to learn there? That's a self part. This is the projection of what is it that I'm trying to fix of saying acceptance from people and making sure that, you know, I don't overthink and do too much of calculation within my mind. And many a times I just want to make sure that things are going right. I don't, I want it to be perfect because probably there's been some imperfection in the past. And that's why it feels like, oh, I think I want to change something. That's a lack of self-compassion of saying, I don't want to see myself like that. So what do you want to see yourself as? That's your self part. Got it? Yeah, I, maybe you don't have the word yet. When you sit with yourself and do this questioning a little more, Rohini, you will definitely find it. Yeah, it is because we're very much connected with the yeah. past. Yeah. yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. okay. It was nice meeting. Thank you. Rajiv? Oh, sorry. I muted you. Sorry, sorry. Go, go, go. Sorry, you're on mute. Yes, uh, hi ma'am. Uh, this hi. is again a follow-up question from uh, Rohini yeah. too. Sure. So how do I know as a full stop that anxious and other, uh, as I keep self-reflecting, yeah. how do I know that's a full stop and that is the reason? I, when it comes back to only you, there is nobody else in this. This is just you. Okay. Like you know, when I extrapolated and kept coming back, I came back to just me now. There is nobody else. That okay. anxiousness lies within me. That right. fear lies within me. Yes, there are people who make me feel anxious or fearful, but the intensity lies only within me. When I know it's within me, it stops there. So, and in your case, Rajiv, it definitely stops there. It's you who has to let go of what's happened and learn to rework on it with all the skills that you've built till now. Okay. Yeah, uh, and it comes back to you. You know it's this. You know right. you are feeling anxious in all the set of things that you could have felt, Rajiv. Okay, for those of you who are thinking, what is he talking about? He is the person who asked me, uh, if I want to write that, you know, I want to let go of my anxiousness and fear. You remember, I've been talking about it and quoting it. He is the one who spoke to me personally. That's why I, I'm responding to him on that. So yeah, that's, that's exactly what we're looking at, Rajiv, where you're trying to uh, say, is this finally only you? why you picked up fear as an emotion, anxiousness as an emotion, when you know it's that and you are feeling it, it stops that. Now it goes again back to childhood traumas. Correct. Yeah. So all now of, I go back, I go back, I go back. All of this goes back to that. Everything uh, finally goes back, not necessarily to childhood. All of us go back to looking at something that you're projecting to the future is always a learned choice. Those okay. learned choices are choices from the past. Like we, Like you know, we don't even dream of something new. We even hmm. dream of things that we've already seen in life or heard of it or visualized it. So it only comes from there. Now, when you say you're happy, when you feel you're anxious, it's all a learned system. Yeah. It's all how the yeah. nervous system has picked up, Raji. Definitely it comes from there and we need to heal that only. Raji, okay. we need to heal it. Come on. Yes. We to get this done. Yeah, yeah, we have to get this done this year. Yes. Yeah? Yeah, same goal. And another question. Now, I am. Yeah. Now I am uh, this one now like anxious person. Yeah. That's a negative thing. Yeah. Does, does it it is. Go into that. Uh, if you would want to, ideally, you can keep both. You can keep both your uh, ones that you, you you kind of feel like this is work in progress. You can keep the ones saying this is great things that I like about me. Nothing is bad. Nothing is good. But right. if you really want to call yourself saying 2023 when I ended. I was that person who is anxious and fearful. Write it in a different color pen and keep another one in a different color pen. So you know okay. saying, ah, okay, I'm both of this. I'm the yin okay. and the yang. You can keep both. Got it. I got it. Okay. Uh, last one question. Yeah. Uh, regarding the vision board and the smart goals. Yeah. Now, what if I have uh, more goals or I have more yeah. visions? Do I note that or one main goal and one main 
No, vision there board. is there is no necessity. Vision board is basically many a times vision board goes. It's like a dream. There is no end goal to it. Even if I say it should be achieved in 2024, many a times it's just a dream. It's like a plethora of things. There is yes. no head or tail to it that can be in the vision board. But how do you structure that thing around is when you put that as a go as a goal for yourself. So each one of them in the vision board definitely will have space in the level 10 goals. There is no way it's not there. Okay, and so everything in the level board. 10 goal, maybe you might have missed out in the vision board, but it will be there in the level 10 goals. Like spirituality, many of us wouldn't have even thought about it, thinking about vision board. You, you, you must have not even considered saying, hey, I, I will be spiritual. But here you will be able to see it. So what you see in the vision board many a times are your two major chunks of goals or three hmm. major chunks of goals. The rest of it comes when you sit down and ask yourself, what else is life for me? So, like you said, the collection of uh, vision boards mm -hmm. uh, are broken down as level 10 goals. Yes. yes. And these broken down can have maybe three, maybe spiritual as meditate or maybe yeah. type or something. Yeah. You can do yeah. that. Yeah, you can. Yes. Got it. That's it. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. Thank you. And yeah, uh, like he, he was mentioning, like what Raji was asking, it could be possible that, uh, you know, for me, Meditation is spirituality. For someone else, meditation could be emotional well-being. For someone else, it could be meditation as a personal development that I'm going to do. It really depends on how do you see it. Right. Got it? So yeah, you can keep it in my... Don't keep it everywhere. Whatever huh. you call it as, keep it in one place. Yeah? Okay, Rajiv. Yeah, All right. Thank you. Okay. Supreeta? Hi. Hello. Am I audible? You are. Yes, yes. Yeah, this is the second time I'm uh, uh, attending your session, but uh, after purchasing the black box, this is the first time. Sure. Uh, actually, uh, I am uh, completely broken into pieces among this level 10 goals. Okay. Except to spiritual and finance. Okay. Um. Why I choose a uh, uh, black box to purchase is yeah. I never want to give up. Right. Yeah, you should not. Good. When we give up is when we fail, Suprita. Yeah, that is the reason I purchased a uh, black box. And uh, when we were discussing about this level 10 goals, yeah. uh, that was, you know, I was wondering, uh, I'm lagging behind all the things except two. Yeah. That is what I share, spiritual yeah. and finance sure. so now i'm confused how i should start from the scratch ah okay good so look at because yeah because uh, um i was pretty clear with my clarity and uh, i i believe i shared with you in the last session that my thoughts feelings and, and actions are very much correlated come again my what did you say? thoughts feelings and action Ah, okay. are very much correlated. It definitely is for all of us, Suprita. It is. Yeah, because I don't have a kind of a thing like, you know, I think something, but I put it in something in a different way. It is like what I think, what I feel, the same thing comes as an action. Right. Uh, but most of the time, um, it's been misunderstood. Hmm. Uh, maybe I, I am judged. Hmm. So, so many things, so many factors, yeah, uh, you know, influencing on uh, that particular core uh, quality of mine. Uh, uh, because of that, uh, um, it, it is like a, a decade of uh, it's 10 years almost, there is a break. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I have gone to the saturation point. Right. So now, again, I want to start. Yeah. Yeah, I, I need your help that how can I, so here should I have to recognize my limitations? Yeah, yeah. Or I should, a uh, little bit, bit of confusion where I'm, you know, where I am, you know, I maybe understand. I'm striking, striking I, some uh, between, yeah. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, Suprita. Uh, okay, now in generic terms for all of you to... <laughs> I might, uh, so please, I might not get into the nitty gritties of what you said, like what you say, my thoughts, 
become my feelings and that's how I kind of react. Our thoughts is what makes our emotions. Our emotions is what you feel in your body as your sensations. And that is how we always do our actions. Okay. So your actions are always driven by your thoughts. That's how the, that's the basic core of things. Now, uh, coming to what you said, saying, you know, uh, should I acknowledge my limitations? Yes, we should. All of us should, Suprita. We think, no, only a person who's strong needs to start and we should be able to go forward and all the goals. No, whoever we are, wherever we are, can, can my vision board look as beautiful as Priya's vision board? Maybe no. Maybe I might be somewhere else, but the problem is I should not compare my, my level 10 goals to anybody else. I was here in 2023. This is where I'm stuck. 2024, I'm going to do five things right. Start with your own comparison with your own life. That's when it feels like, okay, I'm willing to unclog. Otherwise, it looks like, oh my God, I'm starting at minus 500. You might be thinking I'm at minus 500. Maybe everybody here is at minus 750. But it looks like because we all have that brilliant uh, facade that we can put out, we put it out saying, oh, we're all at minus, not minus 500, we're all at plus 500. And it looks overwhelming for for a few of us, nobody is perfect, nobody is imperfect. All of us have limitations, all of us have our strengths, Suprita. Start with where you are. Your comparison is you today. 2023, where are you? Now tell me, what do you want to do in your health and fitness? Now choose, how do you think you can become a little different in your personal development? You already have two of your goals, which are perfectly running fine. The remaining eight, try asking yourself, how are you going to get a little better every single day? The, the race is within yourself. You're meeting your best version. Nobody else's. Okay? Yeah. All right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You understood, right? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I get it. But only thing is start. Yes. Start somewhere, Suprita. It doesn't matter where you're starting from. Start somewhere. All of us, it looks like, oh, everything's perfect on the other side. The grass is always greener on the other side when we compare saying, why not me? Why did this person get all of it? Doesn't matter. You're here. Your journey is going to start from today. We have another 365 plus days in our hand. Let's use that to make it a little bit. Maybe and, next yeah. 27th of December, 2024, when we relook at it, we're like, oh my God, I at least took two extra steps. That's more than enough. Yeah. Okay? All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank okay. you. All right. Archana? Okay, Archana and Harish, can I take leave after that? I'll write down the rest of your names. Don't leave. I'm going to write down all of your names. Tomorrow I'll start with questions with all of you. But would it be okay that I end at Harish today? Because you have to give me a break as well. I've had too many sessions. And look at me blabbering from that time. I'm talking nonstop. <laughs> so you have to give me some time. Wait, before Archana, you start speaking. I'm going to write the list of names. Tomorrow when I start q and I'm going to start in the same order. Okay, we're going to start with Neha. Uh, Tukral, one second, Neha. I'm going to write down all of your names. Pooja, Swati. <laughs> okay, can my team please write this down so that I can take the questions? I don't know. Where is my team? Yeah? I think my... Okay, okay, they're writing down. Okay, they send me a message. Good. Okay, please try to write that down. Archana, can you go, please? Yeah, hi, ma'am. I'm so happy you picked me up. I thought I will not be able to go. <laughs> okay. And uh, it's the first time I'm attending your session. It was wonderful. I literally became your fan. And <laughs> I got this little box today. So I can able to relate. But I joined a little late. But I'll watch that uh, recordings. I have two questions. I'll, I'll take that quickly. Okay. Uh, every year I used to... Uh, I love journaling and I love to make to do plannings okay. and all. But every year I am not able to follow the same... Yeah. Part. Yeah. I will buy um, my own. I mean, I mean, I will buy a plain, uh, plain journal, and I will keep the, use that. I will uh -huh. not use the other planner. Uh -huh. So, do you have any suggestion for that? Okay. Uh, when you're building a habit, Archana, one is you know habits don't go like this. We always have that misinterpretation saying. Uh, we always have this misinterpretation saying, oh my God, my habit is going to go like that. Today I started 365 days, I'm going to journal. And when I look at it at 2024 end, it's going to be beautiful. No, the journey goes like this. 
we drop, we go up. We drop, we go up. We drop, we go up. I'm the founder of this organization, right? I'm telling you, I don't journal every single day. There have been days in the in 2023, like last time I was showing my own journal to people. I have missed out a few days. It's possible for us to miss out a few days. It's possible for us to give up. But what's important is when we give up, don't go down. After two days, come back up. After two days, come back up. And to do that, Archana, the best way is come back into the community. I think we have this brilliant community where we keep learning and working together. Don't worry about it at all. We will have many, many classes like this. And I'll make sure that all of you are full together. We will, we will make sure that we learn together. Okay? Okay. And one more question. As I understand correctly, today you were discussing about a journal, right? We have journal and planner. You were taking us through journal. Yes. So today I'm still talking about the journal only. Tomorrow also is fully only about the journal. And because you've got the little black box, day after you will have the planner session. Okay. Uh, could you just explain what is the difference between journal and this planner? Okay, journal is to do with everything about yourself, Archana. This is your goals. This is yourself. This is life. Planner is time management. It's about now, how do I make sure that I use my time effectively? How does my day look like? What is it that I'm going to do? Your to-do list, your prioritization, everything goes into your planner. What you think about yourself? How was your day? How, who are you becoming? What are your happy moments? Emotionally, how are you feeling? Is all your journal. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, Archana. Thank Hari? Okay. Everyone listening to me, my team has promised me that they're going to go put up that uh, post out there. You're all going there and you're going to sh share what did you take back, okay? I'm coming there and spending the next one hour. Seeing what did you people really write. <laughs> Harish, go. Hi, ma'am. Hi. Yeah, hi. Uh, do you able to listen me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, okay. Uh, Ma'am, actually, you are uh, energy so actually uh, uh, vibrant. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Um, I have three questions. So, uh, um, uh, uh, I stammer sometimes, so I think no, no problem. See, that stammering will come because you're feeling a little conscious. Don't worry, I'm here. I'll wait. Take your time. If you want to, you can drink a little water. You'll actually feel better. No, no, no. no, no. no, no. Right. Take your time. Okay. Uh, actually, on today, uh, 51 things I love about. I love about myself. Actually, in the study, uh, should we need to, actually, should we need to write what actually good and bad about us or what we good things about us? In which one, Harish? Can you repeat that spread again? Uh, uh, 51 things I know about myself. About myself? I would suggest you write good things, no, Harish? Do you love bad things about yourself too? No. Then don't write. Write the good things about yourself and things that you're work in progress. Like, for example, uh, see, for me, I'm really bad with finances, okay? So pathetic with finances, I hate it. But every time I put an effort to get better. So I write saying, I like, the, I love the way that I'm putting an effort to learn finances. I love my effort towards finance management. I don't write saying I'm so bad at finance. I don't write that. I write saying I love my effort towards finance because I love that. It looks very simple for probably somebody who's good at finance uh, and all of that. You'll be like, what Kripalni, you, you just did that and you feel you love it. For me, that's great because I'm that pathetic at it. So it's okay. Don't write I'm bad at it, right? I love that I'm put, making progress. I'm getting better at it. Okay. If you are, if you're not, uh, then don't simply lie to yourself. Only if you are. Okay. 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 Uh, uh, and on actually calendar, uh, calendar 2024, how do you need to fill those pages? Uh, Would you like uh, the calendar 2020? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, what do yes. you write in calendar 2020? Do you have the little black box or do you have just the journal? Yeah. 
Yeah, um, I have actually only the journal with me. Okay. If you I didn't buy the yeah, little platform. Okay. Oh, if you have only the journal, Harish, use the calendar spread in multiple forms. I don't know what you do, so I'm going to give you examples. See, with the journal, also you got the calendar, right? You've got this calendar. Yeah. So yeah. my suggestion is use this. I don't know where, uh, how you work, what you do. Use this to create your major frogs for the day. Now, when I say major frogs for the day, there is this I think I'm a big fan and I think I should become the promoter of I6 books in India. Eat That Frog is one, one such book that I really, really like. And time management for me, I think, speaks phenomenally well in Eat That Frog. Every day, there is one thing that you're trying to do perfectly right. It could be one meeting in the office or it could be something on your self-care. It could be your anniversary. It could be something. Put all of them here. So, you know, saying, okay, today, what's the most important thing for me? I have to do this. Today, what's Kripalni's most important thing is making sure that she does this session right. Okay. So, that is what I would have written here. What I write in the calendar is completely dependent on me. It could be personal things that I don't want to put out here. I want to keep personal things separately. I can keep that. It could be self-care things that I write for myself saying every month, at least this I'm going to do. I'm going to have a date night with myself. I'm going to take myself out for a spa. I'm going to go watch a movie. I'm going to go for a concert. Probably I'm going to go do things with my loved one. Whatever makes sense to you, which is all about yourself and your happiness, put that in your journal. Okay. 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 I, I do understand. Yeah. And what was the third question? Uh, and my third question actually is what do you need to fill in actually uh, family and friends and the other actually relationships in level 10 goals? Okay. Uh, sort it out between family and friends. Sure. And, uh, Are you a married so, person, Harish? Is it okay for no, me? Not yet. No, not yet. Okay. Not so, yet. family and friends could be. It could be as as wide as it depends on who you are as a person. So nod your head if it makes sense to you. So I understand it. Family and friends could be as wide as, you know, my entire relatives, my cousins. I know I have fun with these kind of people. I'm going to make sure this year I'm going to do a cousin's trip. I'm going to make sure this year okay. with my friends I'm going to do these things. Or I know there are these people who are toxic in my life that I know if I kind of get spend a lot of time around them, I know I kind of get affected. So this year, I'm going to make an attempt to avoid being in being around them. So staying away from toxic okay. is going to be a goal. Other relationships could be probably now I'm looking for a partner this year. So what is the effort I'm going to be putting to get that partner into my life is my other relationships. It could also be, like I said, this could be your partner. It could be our usually what they look at it in the Western world is they call it as a sexual relationship. We can also look at it as okay. sexual. It could be our life partners or this could be our profession. For few of us, no, we keep it separately. Saying professional friends, colleagues are colleagues. They're not friends. So how do you want to also look at your professional colleagues? Could be a goal for yourself. Saying, I think I don't hang out. I'm an introvert. But this year, I think I want to kind of speak up. I kind of want to make more friends. Coffee time, I want to spend with people. I want to at least go out for one team meeting that they're doing, like a team outing. Whatever it means to you for your uh, life, whatever makes sense, you can put it there. Made sense? Yeah. Yeah? Sure. Okay. Did I answer yeah, exactly. questions, Harish? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So on yeah, that note, you. I take all of your leave. Is that okay? And I will see you people on the Instagram chat. Go there so that we can pinch all the rest of the people who did not come today. And yeah, Rohini, that book is Eat That Frog. That's the book that I refer to. And I'll see you all tomorrow just because I'm giving recording. If tomorrow you people don't turn up, these many numbers at least are not there, then that means to say I should not give recordings. Because we put a lot of effort to do this and might as well come here, attend it live, learn with everybody. Put time for yourself, no? That's going to be very, very helpful for you too. Okay? Go. Bye-bye. Take care. And we've made notes of all of your names. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Go. Bye. I don't like closing a meeting on people's faces. So I'm the last one to leave. So go. Bye. I will read everything on the chat and go. Go, go, go. Bye. Good night. Good day. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night. Bye, bye. Bye, Harish. Bye. <laughs> bye. Go, go, go.
Bye. Bye, Kavita. Bye, Sadat. Bye, Prithna. Bye. You wanted to speak something, Prerna? Okay, one second. I'm allowing you to unmute. There. Actually, you told that you promote some of the books. I am very enthusiastic to learn about the books. I just want to ask, what are the book names? Okay. I really, really recommend. Honestly. Eat That Frog and... Yeah? Yeah, you told about Eat That Frog. I want to know about the other books. Also. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. One book that I definitely suggest if you are, if we know how to read English and if you want to really read, uh, read a book, I feel if we call ourselves as a human being, we should re definitely read this book called The Courage to be Disliked. Courage to be Disliked, okay. That's a fantastic book for emotional wellness, that's one. Uh, you can read this book called Eat That Frog and another book. I actually read the book Eat That Frog. Good. Okay, you liked it? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. And then the other one that I really, really like is uh, the Book of Joy, which is basically a conversation between Desmond Tutu and Archbishop. Uh, so Archbishop Desmond Tutu and Dalai Lama. So it's a very good book on secular ethics. So each one of them are on different things. So secular ethics, Kelly, this book is nice. If you like, uh, I also suggest people to read this fiction book called The Palace of Illusions. I think for women, it's like one of the fantastic books to definitely read. It kind of feels, um, you know, it talks about Draupadi from a very different uh, perspective. There okay. is also, if you are someone who kind of, um, who kind of questions a lot of spiritual practices in India, and you feel like, why is it that my mother made me do this? Why did that person make me do this? I like this book called the Ritu Vidya. So this is, uh, this is also about talking about how why is it that we do certain things in a certain way? Why is it that we follow certain rules and regulations as, uh, and then, you know, we say, okay, I don't want to follow it because we did not know the reason of it. But now that you know the reason, you might as well just start following it. So yeah, this is another book that I really like. So I've given you like a bunch of it. Yeah, you've given me five books. Thank you so much. And I just want you to have some water. You've been talking since long. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. For I'm actually going to go lie down right now. <laughs> speaking non-stop from that <laughs> you're doing such a great job thank you thank you so much for this thank you okay so can i take leave from all of you yeah. go good night Bye. people go 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 pujita you wanted to say something yeah go um, I'm just a very small question. I'm so sorry for bothering you at this time. Uh, so lately, uh, when I've been journaling and all of that, I just realized that I'm getting way too comfortable with myself. Like I'm so okay to go on solo dates and I just don't want anybody to come with me. But also I am worried. Why? Because what uh, if I get way too comfortable and I'm not okay to get along with people? I'm usually an extrovert. Yeah. So that's okay. But I'm just scared, like, what if I don't talk to them and all of that? Perfect state to be in. Because what happens is, I think we have this misconception of when a relationship happens, somebody else comes into our lives to make us feel a little more better. No, it's not that they come to complete us. You have to go in as a completely full person. And okay. then have another completely full person with you in a relationship that's when both of us grow together usually what happens no we feel like no but usually when i'm sad i needed a friend now i don't need a friend oh, when yeah. i needed somebody now that i don't need anybody no it's okay yeah. not to need anybody and okay. when you when you actually have conversations with people thereafter you're 100 percent there out to be there with that person like for me okay. i Really comfortable with my, myself you leave me with myself I'm totally fine but yeah when, I've reached that point too <laughs> yeah, when you get there no Pujita when you actually are available you have patience for people you'll be like mm -hmm. it's there for you and you are 100 person there for the person otherwise we are stuck in our own lives and we okay. have like all conversations people have no there is a problem that two individuals mm -hmm. at times I go in with the problem to another individual mm -hmm. but I'm yeah problem itself you know how to solve it then what you talk to this person is profound so it's no, good no, no, no. So this is so i'm on the right track <laughs> okay. Okay. okay okay thank uh, you thank you so much okay all right okay, okay bye bye yeah. uh, do we get the recording yes you get the recording guys three two days from now okay Chalo. bye go go people i'll see you later bye
Sanya, there's no discount code in the new paper. No, we haven't given any discount codes to anybody. No, there is no discount code in that paper. I don't know if you're still here. If you're here, we don't have a discount code. No, Sanya, this time we removed the discount code because we felt like nobody is going to keep that letter. Might as well send you people on an email. That's why it's not there. So don't worry, you haven't missed out anything. Bye-bye, see you.